Hello, hey everybody, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome to Sunday. It's another Sunday, oh yes. <sighs> I made a grievous error today. <sighs> I didn't think it'd be quite as warm today, so I thought, yeah, we'll do, a, we'll do a stream. It'll be fine, no worries. And then the sun came out and it's like heat. So yeah, it kind of, kind of snuck up behind me there. <sighs> welcome everybody, welcome to Warhammer Sundays. My little live stream every Sunday where I sit and do my Warhammers, hang out with you guys and have a good time. Can anybody, everybody hear me and see me okay? Good, hopefully. I've pressed all the right buttons. Nothing's gone horribly wrong. Uh, how is everybody? I nearly didn't come on today because about an hour ago I had a mass, I just kind of decided to completely fall over in the at the back of the house off a step and hurt my leg and my knee. So I busted my knee and I busted my foot and hurt my wrist and I'm like, oh, it's just one of them days today. So, yeah, so, yeah, nearly didn't make it, nearly, but it's all right now. I might have a bit of a twisty ankle, but I'll be fine. I'll live, I'll live. Yeah, welcome, everybody. Uh, for those of you who'd never watched one of these before, this, like I say, is my live stream where I try and do some work on my Warhammer army, the unending forces of the holy contrivance. My uh, Warhammer army that I'm building up to be themed after the Principality of Zeon from the Mobile Suit Gundam universe. Yes. Uh, and I just, this is what I do work on at the weekends. During the week, normally I do my normal stuff, my gunplay and other builds. Uh, but on the weekends, it's Warhammer time, and I figured I might as well just hang out for two or three hours with you guys on a Sunday. Uh, do what I'm doing and let you guys hang out and chat. Two thin coats, says Speedy Q8. Yes, indeed. Uh, now, if you've never watched one of these before, first and foremost, uh, there is a live chat, as you can see. Where's the camera? As you can see there. Uh, there's also a live chat on the YouTube page. If you're watching this somewhere where there is no live chat. So if you're watching it on the Patreon page or where I've linked to it in Twitter or somewhere else like Facebook uh, and you want to join in the live chat, just click the little YouTube icon which is down here somewhere in the bottom corner of the video player. Click on that and that should take you to the YouTube page where the live chat is. Now we'll be doing sticker giveaways and things. Uh, who's going? Somebody said they were going. Wait, what? Oh, Jerry says a quick hi and bye folks. Just shopping in Glasgow with the missus. Fox, have a great show. I'll watch the catch up later. Hi, Jerry. Bye, Jerry. <sighs> Gotta love Jerry. Um, yes, yeah, so if you want to join in the live chat, click on the YouTube icon if you're watching it somewhere other than YouTube. And you can have live chat. We'll be doing sticker giveaways and stuff later on. And I depend on you guys in the chat to give me crap to talk about because otherwise... It's also, I depend on you guys in the chat to distract me enough that I don't actually get any work done because painting Warhammer is fun and hanging out with you guys is fun. But when I'm doing both, it gets really hard. I'd rather just hang out with you guys and do any work. So <laughs> you guys give me an excuse not to do any work. Uh, yes, yeah, so I will try and do some work. As always, uh, if you want to ask a question, uh, please do. Please give me stuff to talk about. Stick it in the chat, which I don't know why I'm pointing to my iPad because you can't see it because it's behind the chat window. Uh, if you want to put the question in the chat, <clears throat> excuse me, Make sure you do and put the whole thing in big fat capital letters so I have a chance of seeing it. Uh, if you'd like to, you can do a super chat. Again, I'm pointing to it, but you can't really see it. There's a little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window if you're on the YouTube channel. Uh, that just puts your comment in a big coloured box and also gives me an audio notification um, that, you can, that I know you've made a comment. So it's another way for you to get your comment seen. If I do miss your, your question or your comment, my apologies. I'll try and do my best to keep an eye on chat. But once I'm doing painty painty, I might struggle a bit, so yes. Uh, what else we've got? As always, uh, we do have the uh, boss battle at the top here. You can see there's a health bar at the top, but it's covered up by my hand. There, where is, there it is. Uh, most of it's gone now. <laughs> Look at that, most of it's black, so my health has come down to three, four, eight, nine, seven. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is the street. I'm about a breath. Whew. It's really warm, and I had a massive amount of pasta for tea last night, so I'm a bit... I'm a bit fat and bloaty today and a bit trumpy, I have to admit, so if I sound a bit out of breath it's because I'm really warm and I'm a bit, I'm still a bit distended, let's say, I'm a bit large this morning, a bit bit fat and trumpy, so yeah, I might Bigger, do a few. Bigger. Oh, hello, what was that, who was that, let me see who that was, that was, uh, that was Tony Blackwell, Tony, thank you very, very much, Pika Pika says Tony, Pika Pika, thank you very much Tony, just getting to that, yeah, I'm a bit fat and bloaty today, so if I sound a bit out of breath, it's not that I'm out of breath, it's just that I'm a bit fat and bloaty and like, oh, everything's heavy. <laughs> I ate far too much pasta. Uh, yes, so this is the stream boss battle here, you can see. Uh, my health is down quite a bit. Uh, basically what happens is I started off with 100,000 health and you guys, the viewers, knock my health down by doing uh, super chats in the chat here. Uh, every time you do a super chat, it takes a bit of health off. You can donate tips to the tip jar, which address is here, uh, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. 
or if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. Each of those three things takes a bit of my health off. When it's a tip or a super chat, the more you tip or the more you pay for super chat, the more health comes off. Why are you doing this? Because whoever gets me down to zero becomes the new stream boss and they will win a Warhammer kit or something similar, whatever you want, of your choice. Uh, we say Warhammer kit because it's a Warhammer stream, but it could be a perfect grade Gumpler or something else. It could be anything you want. You will win basically a kit of your choice, anything you want. Uh, and then you'll be the stream boss and then people will with your health down and when your health gets to zero, whoever knocks you down to zero, <clears throat> they become the new stream boss and then I'll buy them a kit of their choice. Now to give you an idea, I'm down to 32,000 health. So we've gone past halfway and we're on 206 pounds. The budget so far, all the money you've raised doing the super chats and the, and the tips, that goes into a pot to buy the prize for the person that wins. So far we're on 206 quid. Just think what kind of kit you could start to be getting with 206 quid. And we're just past halfway. So just so you get an idea, we're well, about 200 quid so far. That's already quite a lot of perfect grade kits. Pretty much most Warhammer kits. We, we're kind of excluding Forge World at the moment because Forge World comes with a whole raft of problems. That if you order it, if you choose a Forge World kit and I order it and you get it, and it's all crap and mismolded and wrong shapes and pieces missing, it's not my problem and I won't get involved, but then you can't do anything because you didn't order it. So we we might not do Forge World. I'm saying don't do Forge World for now, but we'll see. But yeah, you've already, the budget already allows for most Warhammer, standard Warhammer kits. 200 quid, that's two nights. That's the big, most of the big box sets, um, plus some of the bits and bobs. What will basically happen is when, whoever wins, when they win, I will let them know what the budget is and then they tell me what they want and I order it. So there we go. So we're on about 200 quid so far and we've got, we're just over halfway, so you can imagine how much it's going to be. So get your tips coming through, get your uh, subscriptions in, and get your super chats coming through, and we'll get that down to zero, and somebody will win something awesome. Anyway, let's move on. <sighs> right, let me just get my enormous beverage. I'm on tea again this week because it's hot and sweaty. And hot and sweaty weather, I have decided, since coming to love Barry's tea, hot and sweaty weather is tea weather, not coffee weather. <sighs> Right, so I've got a runny nose, so I'm just going to deal with that because the camera's on. I always get a runny nose the moment the camera goes on. Where's my tissue? Uh, so what have you all been up to? Uh, me, I have personally uh, done pretty much nothing this week. As you all know, sorry, I'm just blowing my nose. As you all know, uh, Mama Fox has been poorly sick for the last few weeks <clears throat> and we're just waiting on confirmation of surgery dates for Mama Fox. She needs some surgery to fix what's going on. So we're waiting on surgery date. Hopefully it should be this week or next week. We'll find out. But it kind of puts us in limbo at the minute. Can't really do anything or start anything because we don't know when it's going to get a call or be a letter coming through the post or they might say, can you come in now? So we don't know. There's no point starting anything. And my mind is elsewhere. So right now I've not done much this week. However, uh, I have uh, prepped some more parts for my army, and I'll show you those in a moment. Uh, but I will go through the chat and see who's in. My foot is really sore, where I fell over this morning. I just fell off the doorstep, I don't know why. I was like, hello, I'm going out to the bin. Oh, I'm on the floor. That was really painful. I'm an idiot. Ah, so we have Tony Blackwell, Mickle Pickle are both in. Welcome, both of you. Uh, James Lorimore is in. I'm here, he says. Uh, Pascal Leaverse is in. My morning didn't count as first, like five hours ago. Uh, yeah, because... Um, Tony Blackwell said first, but Pascal Leaverse basically said, morning, the moment I activated the stream, which was about 10, half 10 this morning. So I noticed it, Pascal, because I was there, and I was like, shall I respond to that? I didn't, because uh, I, I had to go carry out a bodily function. I was desperate. Um, let's have a look. Nim Cinderin is in. Hello from my New York uh, vacation, getting on the tube now, says Nim Cinderin. Wait, they don't have the tube. They have the subway in New York. Tubes in London. Hmm. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's have a look. Who else have we got in? We have Ghost Lyle is in. Hello, he says. Pineapple. Uh, Lee Gallop's in. Hello, everyone. Uh, Lynn Dipple's in. Hi, Dylan. Hi, all. Yeppy Fox is going to be on. Time for nom nom nom, says Lynn. Uh, Speedy Curate, as I mentioned before, is in. Bring on the Warhammers. All the Warhammers. Yes. Well, some of the Warhammers. Uh, who else do we have in right now? Richard Gibbs is in. Hi, he says. Welcome, Richard. Uh, Comcat Sunday, 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 definitely Sunday. It's Sunday morning cartoons. Wayne Haywood is in. Hi all, welcome Wayne. Uh, Zad Power, hey Fox, how's Mama Fox? I've just said, 
Uh, she's doing all right. She's doing all right. We're just waiting for surgery now to just get stuff fixed. And it's like, it's the tedium of waiting. So, and hoping nothing happens in the meantime. Uh, Jerry, as we said, has been in and out. He's shopping with the missus. You have my deepest sympathies, unless you get something out of it. See if you can kind of get it to go past a Warhammer store. <laughs> when she's bought all the stuff she needs to buy, unless it's just domestic shopping, in which case you're screwed, you've not got a chance. But if she's buying stuff for herself, it gives you some leverage then to say, hey, you know what? Could... Now you've bought yourself whatever you bought. How about, you know? Uh, let's have a look. Lynn Dipple says, time to fix me some nom nom, i.e. breakfast. What you having, Lynn? Tell us what you had for breakfast. Uh, Spitty Q8 says to Jerry, enjoy Glasgow, Jerry. Check out the comic shop and cafe while you're there. Can't remember the name, but the entrance is all wallpapered with comic strip things. Interzone 88 is in. G'day. G'day, Interzone 88. I'm vaguely remembering you're in Australia. I have no memory for people, names or anything like that. So I probably, you're probably not. I think you are. I know I sent you something. Uh, Comcat says, can it be a Sword Arts Dora rail cannon? If the budget... <laughs> this is in response to if you win the, the stream boss battle. If the budget, when somebody wins, was enough to pay for and ship the uh, Dora rail cannon, the 135th Dora rail cannon, then yes. I don't think it will be. I don't think we're going to get to 500 quid plus probably several hundred quid shipping. I don't think we'll get that much, and the budget won't be that big, but yes, it would be if, if, if the budget was there. James Lamoureux had burritos last night. I now feel, don't feel quite so bad about the amount of pasta I make. Speedy Curate says, bloaty farty pasta, it would appear. I made last night, sometimes I get lazy and I love pasta, so I got myself some tagliatelle, and I made some tagliatelle with big chunks of chicken, some red onion chopped up, uh, some shrooms. There were some uh, chestnut mushrooms I chopped up. Dead simple. Uh, and I didn't have any sauce. I forgot to get any kind of sauce. I'm like, Ugh. so I had to make a sauce. And I'm not a chef. I hate cooking. I like eating. I hate cooking. So out of sheer laziness, and I couldn't be bothered going to the shop, what I did was I had available a tin of Campbell's mushroom soup. No, a tin of Heinz mushroom soup. Uh, about two thirds of a bottle of uh, barefoot wine, which was quite sweet. And a jar, a bottle of fish sauce, which is the most toxic substance known to man if you get it on you. But if you a tiny bit in food, it's quite nice. So I made a sauce just out of mushroom soup, a um, bit of fish sauce, and what was the other ingredient? I've already forgotten what the other ingredient was. Brilliant, I'm an idiot. I've forgotten what I've just said. Those three things anyway. Fish sauce, mushroom soup, and the third thing that I've already forgotten even though I just told the story. Yeah. Anyway, so I made all that, and unfortunately with the chicken and the tagliatelle and the mushrooms, it's all gas factory at the minute. And I, I, I tend to make a massive panful, so I made tons. And about nine o'clock last night, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm actually physically in pain because everything's stretched out. I'm just distended too much. <sighs> and then it was trumpy all night. I've been trumpy all day. Oh, yeah. Uh, scale model vamp is in. Hello, hello, guys, he says, from South Africa. I was going to say g'day, but it's not South Africa. What What's the South African equivalent of g'day? What's the slang way of saying hello? It's not, you know, like Australians have g'day, Kiwis have kiora. What's the SA thing to say? I don't, I don't know. Uh, the only thing I the only thing I know that's Afrikaans is Yabru, I think. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know Yabru, uh, which is, if I remember rightly, is a, is a kind of polite way of saying "shut up, I'm not listening." What you're saying is "yeah, Yabru," not saying "yeah, yeah, I don't believe you." Also, I don't. Know. I'm making it up. Let's have a look. Uh, the chat moved. Uh, New York is amazing. Wish we could stay longer. Says Nim. Uh, you would you say that in the winter when it's like minus 400 degrees? Who can say? Uh, cover your ears, Spid. Fox is drinking the other drink. Wait, what? Spid is drinking tea. Is it, do I need to make the desk shake now? Da -da -da -da. I, can't, I can't make the desk shake. I can make the camera shake. Spid drinking tea. As long as it's Barry's tea. As long as it's Barry. Oh no, hang on. I read it wrong. Cover your ears, Spid. Fox is drinking the other drink. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yes, I'm drinking Barry's tea. Yeah, well. Trust me, I reckon, I reckon if Spid drank some Barry's tea, even he'd concede it's quite nice. I hate tea, but I like Barry's tea. Other teas are available, but just Barry's tea. <sighs> uh, 
Ooh, how very dare he, says Spit. Afternoon, says Earl D, who's in today. Welcome, Earl. Uh, painting a few Spets Marine this week, not done much. Uh, scale model vamps are still cold, dry, August winds, rain starting. Comcat says he's learned how to make moulds and cast resin and all how to paint tarnished brass. So that's kind of cool. Hope Mama Fox gets better soon. Thank you. Tony Blackwell went to the IPMS Avon model show this morning, got some super bargains. Uh, was it a good show? Was there the statutory table full of unweathered spitfires? Always makes me laugh when you go to model shows. There's always a table where people are built like aircraft. And they've, they've painted it really nicely, but there's no weathering, no panel. It's like, it's just paint, decals, done. It's like, yeah, you want to put some weathering on that? Or some pre-shading? Or some just something to not make it look like it was made in 1975? <sighs> you always get that. Uh, blowing my nose again. Lee Gallup says, you're getting old, Mr. Fox. We need you to get, need to get you a walker. I think I just slipped off the doorstep. I went outside to put something in the bin. And I think I lost my footing and went and flailed like an idiot and landed on all the extremities. Yeah, and my ass. Richard Gibbs has just got my first Warhammer kit this morning. Tau Empire starter collection. Cool, good choice. I can't remember what's in that. I know you get all the dudes. Um, and do you get a the big tank thing? I can't remember what it's called now. I don't. I'm not done. To, I've only done one Tau kit. Somebody remind me, is it the hammerhead or something? The big tank thing? Looks quite mint. Uh, but yeah, Tau's quite cool. Tau, you can do more different colours. Have fun with that. Let us know how you get on. Um, don't forget, if anybody doesn't know, by the way, uh, and Richard, if you're in the Boom Hut, do post up in the Boom Hut and let us know how you go. But don't forget, of course, uh, if you want to uh, hang out with the, the guys in the chat, or anybody else, come to the Model Makers Boom Hut on Facebook, if you're on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom hut. Uh, it's brilliant. I shall put the link in the chat. I can do that on this iPad now, because I've got a new iPad. Uh, no, I won't, I won't do it on the iPad. I'll, I, I, it'd take too long. I'd be messing about, and I'd be wasting time. But facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom, B -O -O -M, hut, H-U-T. Awesome place. Come and hang out and show off your stuff. But yes, Richard, make sure to post up some progress pictures in the boom hut. What did you get, Tony? Asks Spid. Uh, Sprugler Addict says, Afternoon Fox, how's Mummy Fox? Um, she's doing okay, just saying earlier on. She's doing okay, we're just waiting for a surgery date now, which we should have this week or next week. So it's the sitting on our hands, waiting, frustration, and hoping nothing happens in the meantime. Uh, uh, Interzone says, Kill Team, Gene Stealer Cults, Neophyte Hybrids, also making a new arm from green stuff for a Plague Marine. I lost the original arm. Cool. Sprugler Addict is here, but watching the football. Uh, my Muse got me some Warhammer goodies the other day, says Scale Model Vamp. Cool. Teddy Blackwell's got a couple of Polish and Czech armoured vehicles and the Meng armoured bulldozer. Uh, the chat just jumped. Um, scale model vamp is almost finished his 70 uh, his, uh, his 70 cuda hemi cuda mm, lime green with the black stripe down it oh that'd be nice do, 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 do. comcat says glad you know what that model is i'm not sure if that's to me or to someone else uh, yes ghost lyle that's the one uh the the go the comic shop is geek retreat i'm assuming that's the one in glasgow Actually sounds delicious, Mr. Fox. It is. It's actually very delicious, but it's full of um, carbohydrates. So it gives you the trumpage and the farts. It's great. Uh, Speedy Q8 says, My son and him love going there when they see when he sees him in Glasgow. There's collectibles, loads of comics, gaming tables, and cafe noms. Do they sell Gumpler? They need to add Glumpler. Glumpler? Even. Gumpler, even. I'm unconvinced. Read the Barry's Tea argument. You need to get yourself some Barry's Tea. Have, have you heard the word? Of our Lord and Saviour, Barry's tea. Have you been <laughs> I feel like a Jehovah's Witness now. I'll come round and knock on your door. Yes, I wonder if you'd, if you'd heard the word of our Lord Barry. Um, would it be an Imperial Walker? Ha ha, ahem, says Spid. Uh, Mark 400 says, hey guys, just popping in to say hi. I'm going back to Montreal for East versus West GBWC Canada right now. Got an entry, so wish me luck. Good luck. For those that don't know what GBWC is, it's the Gumpler Builders World Cup. Uh, it's like the the big show for people that build Gumpler. They submit their entries and the winner gets a big trophy and stuff. It's kind of cool. It's a bit like the Warhammer Golden Demon, but for Gumpler. 
Uh, somebody said hello. Hasaki Art says hello, Mr. Fox. Hello, welcome, welcome. Uh, Mike Mount is in. Hey, Dad. Uh, Mickle Pickle just got back from helping the wife. What did I miss? All the things we're finished now. We're done. We're going to finish in five minutes. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, oh, JC Models official. Sorry, mate. I meant. Wait, stop. Let's start that again. Hey, Fox. Yay, I made your stream. Wow, says Reese. Uh, RJC Models official. Uh, Comcat, that was about the Sort Arts Dora model. Oh, yes, yes. We Trust me, if you watched um, when me, Ted, and Chris do the eModels live stream on Mondays, we know all about the Dora because we showed it on the stream one night and then somebody bought it. And we know all about that big 500 quid 135th Dora. Um, they haven't made it in a few years um, and it's very hard to find now. Uh, eModels had a he models had a few in stock uh, about a month ago and then they sold them all because they sell out straight away so if you can find one grab it uh, but yes uh, his question for those who weren't here his question was if he won the giveaway for the stream boss thing here could he ask for a door at 135th door it's like yeah if we had seven or eight hundred quid in the budget because you've got to think of the shipping which could be enormous no glum plus there sadly says spid uh, you need to have a word with them then uh, how's Ted getting on, says Sprue Glue Addict. I spoke to Ted today. Um, and Just reading something there. I um, spoke to Ted today on, on the Facebooks. Hey, he's doing all right. He's getting slowly back into it. He's been doing little walks just to get himself up and about. So he's, he's slowly coming back to uh, to, to normal. Uh, we'll probably say more on the stream tomorrow night. But uh, yeah, he's doing all right. He's, he's getting there slowly but surely. Getting himself back to normal. We still, he still won't be on the model stream tomorrow. We're, we're not asking him to come on the stream. It's way too early. It's way too early for that. Uh, JWs don't drink tea. What's a JW? I don't know what a JW is. Hi, Fox. Listening while I'm doing the ironing, says Ickle Pete. I haven't done ironing for years. I haven't worked in an office for that long. Uh, right. Now, before we get going today... Obviously, I'm going to try and do some painting. I need to paint the brassy gold details on the on the uh, on the uh, armages. Uh, before we get going today, um, we do have. I'll show you what I've been doing. Apart from these, we also do have a mystery package unboxing, which isn't a mystery package, uh, but it's a package. And I need to blow my nose again. Wow. My apologies, folks. We do have a package that's turned up. And don't forget, of course, we are announcing who won the prizes from last week's wheel of giveaways uh, we had the enormous enormous Warhammer Age of Sigmar poster we had the very nice cutting mat from the Tamiya's and we had this rather lovely uh, Gundam Cafe Dom Rick Dom notebook and I'm gonna throw in as well last month's White Dwarf I just happen to have a copy of because um, I've read it and I may as well stick it in the envelope so I'm just putting it in the bin so I'm gonna throw in my last month's copy of White Dwarf in that's got all the blurb about the new Imperial Knights so we're going to include that uh, and I probably will give away my copies of White Dwarf as I get them because I say all I'm going to do is put them in the bin. Right, uh, what have I been up to? I will sniffle in this episode, I do apologise. Um, over the last few weeks, the little bits of time I have had, I have primed my Primarni Space Marines. Yes, I know that's not the right pronunciation, it's just funny. Primarni is a slang name for Primark. Um, so I've got a load of Primarni Space Marines and bits on on corks to, uh, to to paint and spray and everything else. So they're all ready and awaiting paintage. They're just primed with Chaos Black. So I've got a full squad of those guys. I also primed, while I was priming these guys in Lead Belcher, I also primed my... Uh, troop of Skitari Rangers. Now what I decided with these was basically to pr prime them in Lead Belcher purely because uh, all this sort of the exoskeleton and stuff is going to be Lead Belcher anyway so I might as well prime them in Lead Belcher and then paint all the other details and the brass and gold and stuff. So that's what I've done. Just prime them in Lead Belcher. That's all that's had been done on them so far so they're all ready to go. Uh, and at some point I just need to get them all painted up. Uh, now it has been a bit challenging all these because I've had to try them where I can. I've made them all as, as completely as I can but some of them as you'll see like that one there his arm is separate because if I glue the arm on there's no way I'm going to not mess up the paint job and stuff so I've had to keep some of the arms separate and some of them I've left the legs off 
again, or in fact most of all of them, I've left the legs off just so I can get inside the flowy great coat and then once that's all done I can scrape the paint off and glue them back together. So I'm looking forward to painting them because it won't be a particularly complex paint job. I just don't know what colour to do yet. I'm going to have them as a house, um, as like a, a squad of Squitari Rangers, that's what they are, but they're not going to be the standard red colour for Mars. Uh, in the Skitari, you do have units or detachments that come from different worlds. They don't come from Mars, they go elsewhere, but they're still Skitari and they fight for, for you know, the Omnisire and for Mars, but they're, they're based elsewhere and they have different colours. So I'm going to make this like a troop of uh, Skitari uh, who are based on maybe one of the worlds that, they, if, I won't go into the fluff, but one of the worlds that the Xeon guys are on. So they've gone there to work with them and they're kind of, they'll take on their colour. So there'll be a, an interesting colour scheme. They won't be, they won't be red. So that's that. So what we need to do this week is try and get some details painted on these suckers. Uh, now he's had two coats of Null Oil and he's had one, as you can see there, ever so slightly different. But I don't mind that. I don't mind some variation. So we're going to leave him with two coats and one with one. Uh, they are going to be, I have decided, uh, if you see my Imperial Knight that I brought on last week, the finished one, I've done the Zaku. Because it's going to be a, a principality of Zeon themed army. I'm going to have a Zaku Knight, a Goof Knight and Charles Custom Knight. So three big knights. And the armagers are going to be painted up uh, in the colour scheme of Mobile Workers. If you've watched Mobile Suit, Origin, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Origins, Mobile Workers were like the 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 ancestors, the, press, the pre... What's the one? The antecedents. The, the thing that came before Zaku's. They were just like mobile workers that were like the prototypes and they were converted for militaries. They were just like things for lifting and shifting cargo and stuff. So we're going to paint them like mobile workers. So they're going to have an orange colour scheme with some hazard stripes. Uh, right, so what we'll do, we'll have a quick look at chat and see what we're doing. And then we'll get going. We'll get doing some stuff. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Everybody's talking about that shop in Glasgow. Uh, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses equal JWs. I've got you. They don't drink tea. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a religious man. Trust me. Oh. Uh, I'll drink as much tea as I can if it keeps me from being religious. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Speedy Curate says yes. I know the one. Didn't know they had trans. I mean, Gumpla though. I'll have to investigate. That might be Forbidden Planet or Forbidden Plant, as Ghost Lyle says. Uh, Forbidden Planet do sometimes have a few Gumpla kits. How many coats of Null Noil was that, Fox? Here, <laughs> that was two thin coats, well, two very thick coats, and one very thick coat. When it comes to shade, you just slap it on. Um, do, 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 do. So, let's do some work. So what we're going to do, we're going to paint the brassy details, uh, and I'm going to completely ignore whatever the tradition is. I'm going to do what I did on the night. I want some kind of connection between the Imperial Knight that I've already painted. So we're going to start off with with Balthazar Gold. Are we going to do Balthazar Gold? I was, I'm was. i trying to remember what I did last time I did these. And I think my plan was to do Sycorax Bronze, but I think what I ended up doing was just Balthazar Gold straight off. I was like, oh, okay then, never mind. So I think we're going to start with Balthazar Gold and then take it from there. Uh, there is another shade to be done on this but for the moment. We're just going to have, because we have the Null Oil, so we're going to get the gold bits painted and then work from there with the shading. Oh, before we do that though, before we do that, holy moly, I'm forgetting my own continuity. Mystery package times. Yay, it's a mystery package. It's not really a mystery package because it's something I ordered from eModels, so <laughs> it's not that much of a mystery. Uh, JS Idaho is in. Welcome, JS. Good day, everyone, he says, or she says. I don't know. I, I know some of you are guys and some of you are girls, but there's some of you I don't know if you're male or female. So I'll try and keep it gender neutral and say they a lot. You may notice that. Don't like to offend anybody, me. Uh, right, so yes, a package I ordered from the eModels. And this is probably going to be something I do. As you know, I've been trying to, at the minute, for the last few weeks, make a start on two Patreon builds. The uh, Strike Rouge Uotori, and then once that's finished, the Sazabi Verkar that I've got to do for two of my patrons. It, it keeps not happening because of either the hot weather or because of, you know, Mama Fox being poorly sick and not had time. Um, so I've still got to do those. And then I've got an e-models build to do, but it's going to be a while. So what I did was I've got myself a little model 
that I'm going to do between the two patron builds. Only because it's a little quickie thing. And I'll film it as any models build series, just because they, so they can have something, basically, before um, before I do the big tank for remodels. Because that's going to be a few months off yet, because I've got the Sazabi uh, and I've got the Strike Rouge to do. So it's going to be a few months before I get to the next e-models build. So I said I'd do get this and do a little, uh, I do a little silly build for them. So let me just get the invoice out. Da -da 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 -da. My address all over it. You don't need to see that. Uh, what I need to do first is just see if we have our sticker in there. I don't think they would have sent me a sticker because I've already got like a thousand of them. Because I have them to send them out. No, they haven't sent me a sticker I don't think. Cool, I don't need them. I've got millions. So yes, what I decided to do was, I decided to get myself... <laughs> uh, if you know me and my history, I've built two of the Ravel Mark 7, uh, the Type 7 U-boats. The 170 second kits, they're three foot long. Um, they're actually not bad, it's quite good, it's quite a good kit. Some of the details are a bit rubbish, the hull is really nice. Um, but they're three foot long and they look quite good. Um, anyway, I do like the 7C U boat. And then when I saw this, when we were doing the live stream for E Models last week and we were having a look, and Chris was like, You know, they've got a U boat. And I'm like, oh, What a chibi U boat! Oh, I'm in that, I'm, I'm all over that shit. So, yeah, I picked myself one of these up. So, what we'll do is we'll do this. Look, it's so cute. We'll do this between the two Patreon builds uh, of the Gumpler. So between the Strike Rouge and the Sazabi, we'll do this. Because obviously the, the next Patreon, the, the Strike Rouge is going to be a Patreon exclusive build. Which means patrons get to watch it. Non-patrons only get like a brief, a brief quick look of series. The Sazabi will be for everybody to watch. Uh, but it's going to be months before I get to film anything for e models. So I said I'd, I bought this for myself anyway. So I'll get to keep this. But I said I'd film this for them. And it's not going to have a lot of parts. <laughs> Look at that! That is totes adorbs. Oh, look at that. That's brilliant. Ted, I'm not going to be drilling out all those little... No, they'll just get a bit of black wash. <laughs> no, I might drill them out. You've got, I like the uh, the base, which looks like a kind of uh, a shipyard. So that is totally adorable. And I'll be weathering it and painting it properly because I've done a few U-boats, so I know I know what I need to do. We've got an enormous sticker di uh, st sheet of decals. Look at that, uh, TK. If you're watching, if you see this TK, look at that. That'd be your nightmare. There's thousands of them. Look, look at all those decals. You'd, you'd never get all them done. That is fantastic. So I'm looking forward to that. Now I don't know if it's a glue kit or a snap fit kit because if you look at the World War II and stuff, they're all snap fit. This might be a glue job. Uh... This product is for use, users aged 14 and above only. Ready to assemble cartoon model kit. Paint not included. This is not a toy. Yeah, it totally is. Yeah, so I'm going to have fun making that. It's just going to be a silly little kit. Brilliant. Brilliant. I love that. So, yes. So, just wanted to show you that. That's now out of the... Find somewhere to put that. I'll just throw it over there. So, that will come after I've done the Strike Rouge. Um, I am hoping, again, um, speaking to my two patrons... My, my two patrons know, Jordan, who I'm building the Strike Rouge for, knows that obviously Mama Fox has been sick and the weather and everything else. So that's I'm, I keep trying to get that started, but it's just the situation right now is I keep not being able to. Uh, and then the Sazabi will be done as soon as the Strike Rouge is done, as soon as that little submarine's done, which won't take long. Yeah, like a week to build that. <sighs> right, so, right, bit of tea. Um, bit of chat and then we'll crack on. Uh, Lynn Dipple, Mr. more Mr. E stickers, I want one, wait, wrong show. Yes, if you mean one of these. Do you mean one of them? <laughs> yeah. You have to watch the E-Model stream tomorrow to get one of them. You watch my stream, you get yourself a couple of them. Yeah, we'll be doing that later on. Uh, let's have a look. Huntsman says into zone 88. Shut up, shut up. That's not a spider. <laughs> Uh, it's adorable, says Comcat. Hello, Fox. Hello, all, says Davey UK. Hey, Davey. How cute. I'm going to order one, says Link. Yeah. That's probably the only floaty thing I'd ever build, says Spid. You need to build... I, I would actually recommend... You, you know what I'm like with Ravel? Their 172nd scale 7C U-boat is actually pretty good. The hull itself is a really nice hull. You've got to drill out all the holes, but the hull itself is really nice. Um, the, the, the superstructure is pretty good. Uh, the, some of the deck guns are a bit pants, but you can get third-party metal for them. 
but it's actually quite a nice big kit. It's not bad at all. I would recommend it. It's only like 40 or 50 quid, I think. Uh, or you could spend four or five hundred pounds on the one that Ted's building, which is huge. Uh, Inked Gumpler is in. Hey, Inked Gumpler. That does look rather good, says Davey UK. Might have to get one as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's have a look. Made it, says George Flutter. Hey, George. I'm working to mother. I just ordered one from eModels. Cool. Yes, they do ship to the US. eModels, my sponsors. eModels.co.uk. This is nothing to do with them, obviously. Right, should we do some work? I have the Armager. Oh, ha, ha. Armagers. This is Harbingers, then. And we're going to start with Balthazar Gold. Now, I can't remember if these are the colours I actually used when I did my night, so this could go wrong. But if ever you can't remember anything, uh, George Flotter says, It's my birthday. <gasps> Everybody ready? Ha I can sing this because this isn't copyright anymore. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear George Flotter, who's in chat right now and watching this YouTube stream. <gasps> Happy birthday to you. Cool. Happy birthday. I'm now, I've now consigned myself to do that every time it's someone's birthday, haven't it? Arse. Yeah, right. Let's get cracking. So I've got my wet palette ready. Wet palette across the universe. I need to get my stirring brush so I don't mess up my good ones. I need to find my stir. Is it that one there that's left? Yes, it's that one. Of course it's that one. I get all the brushes out, and the one that's left behind is the one I need. <sighs> Thanks, Fox, says George. Yeah, don't pack me for singing. Chris from Gross Models. Hello, all. Can't watch this week, but managed to pop in to say hello. Hey, Chris. G'day, bro. <sighs> I think you models should start stocking Skipper Ted Gross Models and Model Making Guru stickers, says Brew Glue Addict. No. You don't need to promote our stuff. We need to promote their stuff. Did, 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 did. Eh. Right, so I probably put I put far too much on there. I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit not with it today. So that's more paint than I would ever need. And I've made a right mess of it. Do, do, do. I do recommend uh, whatever paints you're working with, do have one or two brushes set aside, just purely for the purpose of getting paint from the pots and onto the uh, wet palette. Because you don't want to rest, you, you want to really get in there and get the paint out and dig it in. So you don't want to use good quality brushes because you'll end up getting paint in the ferrule. I just have one crappy old shade brush that I use just purely for getting paint into the pot. Uh, JS Idaho says, hey Fox, are these armages going to be Xeon as well? Everything's going to be Xeon. Apart from the apart from the Skitari, which are just going to be kind of associated with Xeon. Because they'll be Skitari, but they'll be... Live, they'll be based on the planet and the same and they'll be they'll have a kind of color scheme that matches i can't make them zeon uh, but yes these are going to be zeon they are going to be painted up to in the style of mobile suit workers from mobile suit gundam the origins so they'll be orangey shades so there you go yes right let's get some painted painted done so for this i will go in viz uh i'm going to use my wow it's faded already my monster brush i'm going to vary between my monster my the War, the army painter monster and regiment. In fact, I'm going to do the regiment brush first. Put the tube back on my monster brush. I can't hear the word monster and not hear the voice of that. Who was that violinist in the eight eighties? Nigel Kennedy. Monster he used to do violin and Four Seasons and stuff, and he seems to have faded in later years. But yes. So what we're going to do? Got a little bit of water on the wet palette. Don't need a lot. Uh, so the wet palette's moist. If you've not made yourself a wet palette, I have, do have a video. Uh, go to my... You're on my channel if you're watching it now. On my channel there is a playlist called How To. Go to that playlist and there is one there that tells you how to make a wet palette. So what we're going to paint, we're going to paint uh, these bits, I think. Going to paint round the... Ooh, I've got what I painted now. Oh, I've forgotten what I did on the night. Oh well. Uh, we're going to paint round. We're going to paint this bit in the middle, I think. It's a bit thin, so I'll take some off. Actually, getting to see me do some painting this time. Look at this, doing some work and everything. Do do do. Now, my advice is, and I've said this many times, 
but I see people forgetting it or they don't know. If you're painting small details like these, or anything that's not massive, you're not basically putting down a base coat on a large area. One mistake I see people doing is using a small brush, like a tiny detail brush, because they think that's what you need to paint with. Here's a handy tip, and probably all of you watching know this, but here's a handy tip for you. Always try and use a brush that's much bigger than you think you'll need. So if you're painting, say, small areas, don't use a small brush. Use a bigger brush, which is why I've got out this regiment and this uh, the monster brush, which are quite big. The reason is, if you use a small, tiny brush, you're going to get lots of brush marks. Because you're trying to cover a not tiny area with a tiny brush, you're going to get more brush marks. If you use a bigger brush, first of all, you've got a bigger brush area, surface area, to cover more of the part that you're painting at once. So you reduce the chance of brush marks. And also, uh, the bigger the brush, the more paint it actually holds in the, res in the, in the bristles, which is your paint reservoir. A little detail brush only holds a really small amount of paint. So it's a bit pants for anything major. They're fine for painting obviously tiny details, edge highlighting, and even then you don't need to use a, big, a small brush for that, but try and use a bigger brush than you think you need, just because it makes life a little bit easier. As long as that brush has a nice fine tip on it, like these, as long as it has a nice pointy tip and you can get some real careful work going on, and as long as you're thinning your paints, thin those paints, uh, you should have good control of the paint and you can make paint. If paint's thin enough, I've got very shaky hands today. If paint's thin enough, it will kind of flow to the edges of things and behave itself for you, especially metallic paints. Uh, it should look pretty good. How am I doing? Can you see all this? Yeah, you can see this, can't you? Now, I'm not looking at chat while I'm doing this. So apologies. Remember, if you want to ask me a question, please put it in big fat capital letters so I can have a better chance of seeing it, or do a super chat, because I get an audio alert that you've done a super chat. Plus it also takes some, some of my health off, if you do a super chat. Now I'm going into the recesses here, but that's fine, because I'm, I'm going to black those out later on. And I'm going to show you, probably not today, I might do, God look at my shaky hands, because I'm resting on the edge of the table. Uh, I'm, if I get a chance today, I'll show you how I did the sort of tarnished metal effect on the gun on the night because I'm going to do the same thing on these chimneys chimneys? exhausts even so yeah I could, I could have used a little tiny detail brush here but all, I've, all I would find is that this would now be covered in really gnarly brush marks with a bigger brush you can get the brush flat and squish it flat and cover larger areas to get and get a smoother colour. You can also carry more paint. Uh, Lynn Dipple is saying she can't spell today because she's forgotten how to brain. Yay! I never knew how to brain. I never learned that in school. Do do do. But yeah, you see how I'm getting the brush a little bit flatter? Now for this, what I could do, and what I will do now, just get, get a little paint off there show you what I mean. So you see the size of that brush? That's the regiment brush. Uh, and I painted that bit on the back quite easily. You just push the paint to the edge. You don't have to worry about it splodging everywhere. But just to show you, here's a monster brush. Get it wet. A nice point on it. Get some paint on that. A little bit of water. Make sure you, you have seen Duncan do this, but make sure you get your brush and twist it to get a nice point on it. And it just means, because there's more paint in the, in the, it's got a big fatter brush, it holds more paint and it's fewer times that I have to reload it. It goes longer between reloads and the bigger the bristles, the flatter I can push it. 
and if you're painting like this and you paint flat like that it does help when you get to edges like you might see here there's an edge at the top of this exhaust it's holding it flat and pulling it along it just naturally conforms to that edge it doesn't go on to the other bit that I want to keep silver now I have just realized I'm doing this right now but I just need to dry brush all the non gold parts <laughs> I forgot to do that I was gonna do that first never mind never mind not the end of the world but yeah so always use a slightly bigger brush than you think you will need trust me on this it takes a little bit of practice takes a while to get used to it because your instinct is for small details I need to, I've not got more space here your instinct is for small details you need a small brush but that couldn't be further from the truth for really tiny details like if you're painting like eyes or you know markings on a small figure or you know something like that say medals on the chest or any tiny details then yes you want to use a, a small detail brush but for something like this where you're just getting a base color down and you just need to get coverage initially then a bigger brush is better but even for small details say you're painting insignia on a on a Astro Militarum helmet or a pauldron or something even then sometimes using a bigger brush is better now there are a few bits where I've gone over edges here and that's fine because we are going to weather these so I'm not too fussed if it looks a little rough and ready around the edges let's grab with a second little bit of a second coat just to darken that down brighten it up and darken it down if you know what I mean but once you get the kind of hang of using slightly bigger brushes than you need you find that you can actually start to paint quite quickly you start to work quite quickly and things go by faster than you expect uh, let's have a look what's chat doing uh, -do. um Norberoid says, have I come to the wrong place? Someone is painting models. Where's Fox? Sorry. Yeah, I've been stolen. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Ooh. I also advise licking your brush, just not with paint on it, says Comcat. Yeah, I lick my brush to get a point. I also need some tissue because my moustache is absorbing massive amounts of tea. Uh, yes, licking your brush to get a point is brilliant. Right. There you go. And then... Don't do like me and just jam it into the side of the paint pot. Uh, no, I, mean, I must get some of those army painter brushes. They are really nice. I mean, there's lots of different brushes out there. I've not used everything. I do love my Windsor and Newton double O and triple O for really fine detail work. They are brilliant. But I do love these for everything else. I can paint most, most of the job work I did on my Imperial Knight was with these two, the Monster and the Regiment. Um, did I, I don't, I only use my Windsor and Newton double O for some of the paint chipping other than that it was pretty much these two a, a bigger brush for like the original base coating and stuff when I'll, I'll show you that when i do the base coats on these uh right well so we need to paint we haven't finished this yet um, loads more to do. Do, 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 do now like i say i should have really ideally dry brushed this before i painted the gold on so i'll do that on the other one and it's not going to be gold. It's not going to be gold when we've finished. It's just going to be a, a sort of bronzy, coppery colour. But the beauty of this is, when you're painting something, just make it up. Oops. Now, a lot of you have asked me recently, in various places, what are the best paints for brush painting um, and you are spoilt for choice especially painting stuff like this I've actually over the last sort of year or so that I've been doing Warhammer and I've been using Citadel paints I have grown more and more to love brush painting and I've actually grown less and less to like enjoy or to like using an airbrush 
to the point now, where am I on camera? To the point now where if I could do everything without an airbrush and just brush everything, I would. Because I actually really enjoy brush painting. Airbrushing is fine, it can give beautiful results. But it requires setup and cleaning and all the, you know, rigmarole that kind of takes away from just the sheer get your hands in, get it messy, get painting kind of thing. And I found with brush painting, I just really enjoy it because there's nothing to distract me. I'm not having to think about, oh, I've got to wear a mask and I've got to do this and Ugh. I'm just cracking on with it. And I'm really enjoying it. To the point now where if I could brush paint everything, I would. For example, I'll tell you now, um, although those two builds I've got coming up, the Strike Rouge Autori and the Sasabi Vercar, the Strike Rouge I'm doing as a relatively clean build. So that is going to be obviously airbrush work because I'll need some pre-shading and stuff on there. So that's going to that's going to be a proper airbrush job. Jordan will get the full the full paint thing on there with airbrush and everything. The Sazabi, when it comes to doing the Sazabi, George is, if if you know uh, George and I had the conversation, George wants me to do it as a dra uh, Shanghai Dragons color scheme. If you don't know, Shanghai Dragons are an Overwatch, or an, an esports team, they play Overwatch. Uh, and he's got a picture of one of the mechs that he wants that colour scheme. Which looks brilliant, and it's going to look great on the Sazabi. But apparently they're not very good, <laughs> they keep getting beaten, and they've not won this season yet. So, he says, the more, the more beaten up and battered you can make it, and weathered is better. So that will be a complete brush paint job. Obviously I'll prime it with rattle cans, or maybe with airbrush first. But then it'll be all brush painting because I want it to look not com not say as battered as the Imperial Knight that I did not that battered, but I want it to look beaten up and I want it to look, you know, used. So that will be a complete brush paint job because there are ways I can introduce sort of shading and stuff post shading if you will, without using an airbrush. And I'll show that when I do these. And what I'm probably going to do with these. Uh, I was debating, because at one point this week I was just like, I just want to crack on with these now. But I thought, no, I'm going to leave them. Because what I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to get a focus on these now, on the Sundays. Uh, because I want to show you the process. Because it's going to be basically the similar process that I used on the Imperial Knight. Just different colours. So, instead of, because I haven't got time to film a, a full video build of doing these things or doing an imperial knight at this point at least this way i can show you on the live streams bits of bits of each like i won't i won't sit here and do everything but i might be like i'll do a bit of work on a certain aspect of it and then finish the rest off camera but at least i'll, I'll start the process on the stream and that way you will get to see what's going on and hopefully, you'll get to learn. And then what I'll do is, I'll probably then separate these out. I'll separate these live streams out into a playlist of their own as well. So at least if you want to know just how to paint you know, a knight or an armager, you can at least see that on here. See it without having to go through every single Warhammer Sunday thing. So what we're going to do is we'll count last week and this week. As episode one and two of the Armager job, Armager builds, and I'll go, when we finished here, I'll go and create a playlist. They'll still be in the Warhammer Sundays playlist. It's just I'll, I'll separate them out for easy reference for people that just want to know how I painted the Armager. Now it's not going to be obviously like watching a full video build because it's not like next we're going to paint this and then I show it and then we cut to the next bit. It's going to be you know like this, me waffling for three hours while I paint a few little bits. But at least. It gives an idea. And what I'll do, say, my plan is, and again, at the moment, right now, at the moment, it's a question of time. I don't, I haven't been able to really get to the bench because there's other more important things I have to be worrying about at the moment. Oops, I went over there a bit, but never mind. Uh, yeah, there's other more important things I need to be, I'm distracted by at the moment, so. 
sadly. But yeah, what I'm probably going to do is on say Saturday, in an ideal world, Saturday will be I'll just work on whatever I'm working on, and then Sunday we'll crack on with these guys. Then when these guys are done, we'll see what's left to be done. There's still two nights to do, and there'll be lots of dudes. So we'll see we'll see how it goes. I mean the nights I may just paint off camera just to get them done, but we'll see. There's nothing saying I can't come along in the future and do another night build just for a video series and then sell it. So it might well be that in the future, even though I've got my three knights for my army, I might buy another knight kit just to build it and paint it and then sell it. And that way I can get a video build series out of that. Uh, right, what are we doing in chat? Uh, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Wow, chat's jumped everywhere. What are we doing? Fox, are those army painted brushes synthetic or natural? Are they worth the money? Um, I think they're a mixture, and yes, they are. Trust me. They're really nice. I mean, the they actually work out... If you get the big mega set, it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I think it's 10 or 11 brushes and that's a mixture of like these two, there's some of the fine detail ones, there's a couple of dry brushing brushes, you get like the Psycho uh, and you get a, a really nice Sable, that's not, uh, you get a nice Kalinsky Sable Masterclass brush which is a fine detail brush, you get whatever, how, whatever number I just shared just then that I've already forgotten, it's about 35 quid so you're paying about £3 per brush, it's more than worth it, they are really really nice brushes, yes there are better brushes, Yes, there are worse brushes, but they're worth it. They're really nice. They are really, really nice. Uh, my enjoyment of brush painting has increased massively since I started using these. Uh, right, whilst I want to paint gold, go oh yes, got to paint those bits, haven't I? Now again, remember we're just doing the base coats at this point. This is just base coating the gold. Uh, and like I said, ideally I would have actually done all the dry brushing on the metallics first. Yeah, I forgot that bit. So I will do that on the other one. But on this one, I may as well finish what I started. And when it comes to dry brushing, we'll just have to be a bit more careful. Because I'll see, if we get time, like I said, if I'll see if I can show you how I did the kind of heat stain metal effect. Might not get time, but we'll see. Okay, so that's that bit. Did I miss the edge there? Yes. The one thing about using brushes that are too big as well, like this little bit here, I'm painting around the bottom. Bigger, bigger. Oh, hello, who was that? That was Lee Gallup. Thank you very much, Lee. Lee says, uh, Camille approves this stream. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Camille. Uh, yeah, for painting little tiny details, like round the edge of this, you might think I want a big, a little tiny brush. No, get a big fat brush and just drag it along the edge like that. Hold it flat to the edge because the bigger the brush, you can control where the edge goes and you can drag it to get straight edges like that. And it's actually easier with a bigger brush than it is with a fine brush. And you also, like I said before, reduce the amount of brush stroke. So when you are painting, even little detail things, I don't know if it'll come out on camera, but like on the edge here, you could get a tiny brush and be really careful, or you can get a big brush and just quickly run it along the edge like that. And it naturally, you, because it's a bigger bristle, you can you can you can flatten it out, and you can control exactly where the edge of those bristles, where the bristles stop, where the you, you won't really see it on camera, but you can control exactly by the pressure you put down where that goes, and it does make doing nice neat edges on things much easier. Now you will see me dabbing with the paintbrush. You'll see me use it in all kinds of different ways. A bit too thin there. 
Um, but the trick, ideally, is most of the time you want to be doing slow, smooth movements. Flatten the bristles down to make like a spatula that you're just laying the paint on with. I'm not doing this jibbity jabbity a lot of the time. Sometimes I am, but a lot of time I'm just pushing the bristles down and making a flat spatula effectively. Flat spatula! And that's another trick to getting a nice smooth paint job. Oops. I'm doing that bit there. What I'm doing here is very gently just fussing the paint surface while it's still wet. Fussing it a bit gently just to try and smooth out if there are any brush marks. Just flatten those out and spread them out. And again, that's another tip and trick to get a nice smooth paint finish. On little details like that. Okay, so that's that. Uh, what else do I need to paint? Bronze. We have those done. We have... I know that's supposed to be the colour of the armour, as is that. I missed that out on that. I didn't do that bit. Uh, we have... What else shall I paint that colour? Uh, oh, I know what I'll paint that colour. I have to tell you, when I did the Imperial Knight, it was most disheartening to spend all that time really carefully painting the head and doing like the lens on the eye and stuff. Because it's a beautiful little sculpted head, doing all that effort on the head, and then you put the mask on and you can't see any of it. And I'm like, oh, that's just arse, that is. So we'll just get this little thing on the side of the head painted. So at least on these armages, there's no mask. The head is just the head. So whatever I do to face, you'll actually see on the finished thing. And when you are doing little detail painting like this, don't worry too much if you get a bit of a splodgy edge. Let's say you've got, you know, uh, a raised bit of detail and you want to get one colour around the on the raised detail, but the bit behind it is different colour. Don't worry too much. If you get a little bit of paint here and there going over the edge, or you go outside the line a little bit, it doesn't really matter, because do remember, most of the time, I can't get to this bit, most of the time, you're not going to see most of it. Like a little bit there, I've got a little bit of paint on this piece of side armour there. That's fine, you can't see it. I can't see it from here. And I probably get good with weathering anyway. Is there anything else I can put on there? Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, let's give that bit in the middle a bit of that as well. Do, 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 do. Beauty of Warhammer is you can stick to the established paint schemes or you can just make stuff up. It doesn't really matter. If you play, if you intend to play it in a game, it doesn't really matter what colour it is. Some people do go to all the trouble of making up fluff and storylines to say why their space marines are neon yellow or what have you you don't have to most people don't mind you might be on dubious ground if you walk in with a load of warhammer kits that you've stuck things on that are nothing to do with warhammer that's a bit more of a, a difficult situation but your own color schemes doesn't matter do what you want uh i don't want to paint anything else coppery colored i can't remember what i painted on the night now that was copper colored Uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to paint on the initially. No, oh, I could paint this bit here. Paint that bit. See, I went over a bit there onto the edge. That's fine because that's going to get dry brushing. It's going to get a shade going into the recess anyway. It's fine. It'll be hidden by all the stuff I put over it. So, when you're at the stage of base painting and just laying down your base colours, don't get too worried or anal about the idea of getting everything nice and neat and 100% crisp and straight edged. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's not the end of the world because there will be further shades. And when I say shade, if you're not familiar with Games, Games Workshop, when I say shade, it's basically a wash. A shade is a wash. There'll be more washes and things to come. And washes always tidy up your edges. 
So there we go, that's that bit. So I'm just fussing it a little bit with the brush just to kind of flatten it out a little bit. Okay. So that is that bit painted. Don't think there's anything else I need on there to specifically paint the copper colour. So, what we shall do is have a quick break where I read through the chat and where I go and replace my water because that's now full of copper colours. Let that dry for a minute and then we can do the next step uh, which will be for this we need to dry brush this metallic first of all then we need to give this stuff a shade and then we need to bring the lightness back to this stuff as well I think so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a swig of tea give me two seconds, I'm going to put the lid back on my wet palette just a sandwich tub sandwich tub and I use the lid as the wet palette make yourself a wet palette, your painting <coughs> your painting will improve vastly and you'll also have much more fun <coughs> excuse me uh, so give me two seconds to go and refresh my water because I haven't got anything in here to pour it away into We are back. Yes, next time I think what I'll try and do is have like a jug of water, clean water, and then an empty jug to pour water into. Uh, now I thought I got away, you know how I said at the start, I fell over earlier on and twisted my ankle and scraped my knee and stuff. Uh, I did two things. I'd forgotten how bad um, grazes can be. You know like when you're a kid and you fall off your bike and you get road rash on your hand? And it's more painful than a fracture. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> I did it on my knee and it hurt. Uh, but I thought I'd got away with not hurting my ankle. Because I twisted my ankle all over the place. However, when I got up then it was actually a bit painful. So, ah, this is going to be fun. So, uh, right. Let's have a look at the chat and see what's happening. Uh, I've got to catch up with the chat. Um, so to J.S. Idaho's question from like an hour ago, are those brushes synthetic or natural? I think they're a mixture of both. But yes, they are worth the money. Merlin's Muse, yummy, licking brushes and coffee. Yeah, licking brushes and stuff. Some people worry about it. I w if you're using acrylic paints and you've like rinsed it off and you're just doing that to get a point, I wouldn't worry. I mean, when I'm painting sometimes, I'll just do that. Just... It's, there's so little on there, you're not going to poison yourself. Don't do it with, like, you know, alcohol-based paints and lacquers and things, because they are toxic. But, yeah, water-based acrylics, you'd be fine. Just don't do it with Agrax Earthshade, because trust me, Agrax Earthshade is the worst taste in the world. It's a horrible, horrible taste. <laughs> really is bad. Uh, it's worse when you put your brush in your coffee instead of the cleaner. That's why I got myself one of these. There's no way I can mistake that for a cup. Let's have a look. Uh, Tony Blackwell says, if you work in a watch factory painting the luminous numbers, don't lick your brush. Yes, <laughs> that's uranium, I think. Uh, Lynn Dipple saying how, uh, there's a joke going on in the chat about brain cells, and Lynn's saying, well, I did have two tumours pulled out of my brain. I didn't know that, Lynn. Uh, but everybody's saying, yes, you are damn lucky. I'm glad that you're still with us. Merlin's Muse says, Citadel paints are beautiful. I wish they were around when I did ceramics. I never finished them. I thought earlier on about the best ones to paint with. Um, yeah, People often ask me the best, the best paints to brush paint with. And I would say, first and foremost, absolutely, Citadel are the best. Just, I've never had as much fun other than with Citadel paints. Very closely followed by the Vallejo paints. Uh, the game colour, the regular Vallejo colours. Uh, and I've not tried the new Mecha colours yet, but I hear they are brilliant. Very closely followed by Vallejo. Um, 
Tamiya, don't even bother. Not worth it. They're not water-based acrylics. You can't use a wet palette. Uh, they don't really behave like that. Uh, ammo paints, they're all right. I just don't really get on with them that much. I'm not a big fan of the ammo paints just because I don't like the finish they give. Uh, there are other paints as well, which may be better than Vallejo, but I've not used them, so I can't say. Only from experience. Uh, but Citadel, absolutely. I've got the runny nose again. Absolutely, Citadel paints the best to brush with. You can airbrush with them. You have to thin them a lot. Ugh. And they do give really good results. But they, they scrape off really easily if you airbrush them. So you've got to be careful handling them. Uh, yes, everybody's saying that they're glad that Lynn is still with us. Lynn is basically saying she had two tumours removed. And she's still with us. She's still able to brain properly. They were probably just in an empty space. Unused area. Uh, let's have a look. Thanks, Tony. That explains my bioluminescent tongue, says JS Idaho. Uh, Neil Ford said something and then removed it and then said something else. Wow. Yes, Neil Ford. We'll just remove you, shall we? There we go. Yes. In fact, we're just looking at Neil Ford's comments. We'll just, we'll just remove you completely. There we go. There we go. See, it's it's not it's not a, it's not exactly a family friendly video stream. This isn't like the e-models thing where I don't mind swearing, but just being a troll or an idiot. Yeah, we'll just throw you out of chat. So if you come in and you act like an idiot, you'll be treated like an idiot. Do 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 do. Uh, do, do, do. <coughs> so my apologies for anybody in chat who watched saw those you obviously get the one every now and then uh, brush painting is fun and relaxing to me I did finally get an airbrush compressor etc cool yeah I just brush painting now for me is so much more fun than anything else than airbrushing Uh, Monsters Inc. moment, child in chat, says Speedy Curate. Yeah, the, the, the problem at the moment is... Um, oops, I don't want to do that. The problem at the moment is, if it's like the E-models, Fox, you've got a couple of trolls hit the ban hammer. Who's the other one? I'll find the other one. Uh, with the E-models one, there's a couple of guys in chat. If, if Chris was around, he'd, he'd send me a text message to say, can you kick this guy out? Because I don't always look at the chat. Unfortunately, not everybody has my mobile number. Do 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 do. Focus. Am I not in focus? Was I not in focus? Hang on. Let me uh, let me test my let me check my focusings. Do 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 do. I need something with writing on it, don't I? Hang on. Let's hold that there. That's in focus. Ish. Sort of. How's that? It might not be focused when I'm down there, because I've got it focused to standing like that, so I can show you things. It's not the best focus in the world. But it works. Uh, yes, so unfortunately, <coughs> because there's, there's no one in the chat at the minute that can send me a text saying, can you kick this guy out? If any of you do, by the way, and you're in chat, and you know my mobile number, do text me and tell me. Uh, do, do, do. Do, 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 do. I, let's have a look. Um, has anyone here built a perfect grade, says George. I started a Zaku. I've not finished it, because I've got to do all the weathering. Uh, but that's one of the older older perfect grades. It's good fun. Uh, Scale Model Vamp has been having fun with the Molotov, the Molotov Chrome Pen. It's supposed to be very good. Uh, they don't take gloss coats very well. They don't take handling very well. Uh, let's have a look. Fox maybe has built one. Yeah, so I've, I've started the um, the perfect grade Zaku. I was doing that as a build for Ammo by Meg. Um, but I had to stop that build for a while because my main point of contact at, um, at Ammo was uh, Meg's uh, wife, who sadly passed away. So at that point, I decided to stop that build just for then, just to because it wasn't really appropriate. So I paused that build. But I've just not got back to it because she was my point of contact, and you know, so 
Fox, we got a couple of trolls hit the band hammer. I haven't found the other one yet. Who was the other one? Dude, it's a cool copper colour. Great way to paint it in a frame. Yes, you may you may get similar methods on your uh, on your Sazabi, dude. Um, one one thousand, two one thousand, a couple of seconds, Fox. You're late. Yes. Uh, Vallejo Mecha Colour is brilliant for the airbrush, says Pascal Leaverse. It's pre-thinned. I've heard that. I've not tried them yet, though. I've kind of lost track of what's happening in chat now. Game inks are my next on my list to try. They're very good. You can just use normal artist inks. Um, as well. The one trick to using an ink, though, if you're doing it like a wash, don't just use the ink straight from the bottle. Especially if it's an artist ink. They're very, very rich in pigment. The trick is you want to thin the ink. And the best thing to thin it with uh, is either a, a glaze medium, like uh, Citadel's Lamian medium, or something like Pledge, the gloss Pledge floor care finish two times more shine whatever it's called now because that's an acrylic basically an acrylic varnish if you thin it with water it breaks down the acrylic binders and it stops behaving like it should and it goes all patchy and blotchy if you thin it with something that's acrylic like a glaze medium Vallejo do one as well or pledge uh, it, it stops it being a bit rubbish and it's, it makes it behave properly it doesn't go all patchy it behaves like it should do right so we've got the brass bits painted <laughs> I've kind of lost track of what chat is doing and it took me forever to figure out what's gone on. Um, so apologies. If anybody has any anything I've missed, please pop something in big fat capital so I can see it. Uh, so we'll get a bit of dry brushing done on him. Uh, now for this, what we're going to need is a piece of tissue. Tissue. Bigger, bigger. Oh, hello. Who was that? That was uh, Mike Mountain. Oh, thank you. Cheers, mate. It says Dad. Thank you very much, Dad. Do, 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 do. Dad, I thought you were a... I must make you a mod on my channel so that you can let me know if people are misbehaving or kick them out. Don't know why I haven't. Thank you, Mike. Love you to bits, Dad. Uh, right, we're going to do some dry brushings. Uh, now, for this, uh, we need to be a bit more careful because, like a spoon, I've gone ahead and done the, <laughs> the gold bits when I shouldn't have done. So, we're going to use a few different brushes. Beep, 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 beep. What I tend to do with dry brushing is start off with a brush and then realise it's not the right brush and move on to a different brush. It's always the way. Uh, Jonathan uh, Teresa Tannum says, Bah, forgot about early morning fox again. Hey, you with us? You with us? The other troll is under the bridge waiting for a goat, says Earl D. I don't know what happens if one of you guys reports someone in the chat if I get a notification. I don't know. So I'm going to start off with what is my favourite um, dry brushing brush. No, I'm not actually. I'm going to start off with one of these. This is my favourite dry brushing brush in the world. It's a Dana Rowney, Dana Rowney Graduate. And the only reason it's favourite is because it's got paint in the ferrule. And it's kind of a bit hard and solid in the middle, but the top is floppy. You were. So it's kind of got a limited movement action. And it's just, it's just become a perfect dry brushing brush. We'll start with that one. Let's just do it. Now, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to actually do a dry brush. We started with lead belcher. It's had the coat of null oil. And I'm going to go in with some iron breaker. Not the usual colour for dry brushing. A lot of times you use Necron compound, but that gives you quite a, a gritty, grainy finish. <sighs> but with a normal paint. Uh, George Flotter says, Fox, someday can you show us your stream setup camera and all that? I could do. Not a problem, it's just I can't show you the camera that I'm filming on because I'd have to film it on the camera that I'm filming on. That's, if you see what I mean, a bit of an inception thing going on there. But I can tell you what I film on. Uh, if I can get this bit of paint off. Yeah, look at that. You are satisfied. It's like pulling PVA paint off. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do, dry brushing 101, dead easy. Get yourself your dry brush, usually flat brushes. I like this one because it's, it's kind of solid in the middle. It doesn't need to be but I just like it. Don't need a lot of paint on there, just a little tiny bit. As Duncan would say, work it in amongst the bristles. Now what I'm going to plan on doing here is not a standard dry brush where I just try and catch the edges. What I want to do is try and really catch the edges, but also kind of go a bit further than that. 
so what we're trying to do is catch the edges first and foremost and then when the paints come off the brush a bit and there's not much on there so I'll just get majority of it off on these edges first because normal dry brushing you're just trying to catch the edge but what I'm going to try and do here, and if I hope you can see this, I don't know if it will come out. Now I've got a bit of paint off, what I'm going to try and do is go on the raised areas, but very, very lightly, almost no pressure, and doing little circular motions. And trying to stay away from any recesses, but go on the sort of raised up areas. And little circular motions just mean I can get a nice smooth finish and try and hide any brush marks. Or any graininess because there's almost no paint on here and you can just build it up slowly and metallics are the best to dry brush with keep going even though you think you've got no paint left because you'll still have some as the paint goes more and more paint comes off the brush you can press a bit press a bit heavier And then when you get back to raised areas and stuff, just go back to doing the dabbing. Uh, and hopefully you can see, it's not fully done yet, but you get a bit of variation. But the little circular motion is key. Uh, I've had a few things sent to me. Uh, let's have a look. So, and that's why I like this brush, because this brush, because it's only got a bit of limited movement in the very tip of the bristles. I don't know why, I don't know the physics of it, it just means I can really control the quality of the paint at the end. And this is a brilliant brush when I'm using things like Tamiya Chrome Silver. Tamiya Chrome Silver is a brilliant brush to dry brush with. Uh, it's a brilliant paint to dry brush with. Metallics for some reason just work brilliantly with dry brushing. But because this is sort of semi-rigid, it does mean I can work around edges and then start to fade it not a big floppy thing that's going to go everywhere but even here I can do circular motions and it means that some parts come out nice and clean and I know you probably can't see most of this on camera some parts come out nice and clean and silver but in some of the around some of the recesses it's still got that kind of shaded faded effect so it's not like silver black you don't get a sudden massive contrast you just get this nice subtle fade from one to the other and you can focus on top areas on surfaces on, on ridges in some areas you get a nice patchy effect where you can see little little tiny brush marks so you don't need a lot of paint you don't need a big floppy soft brush because it's not that kind of dry brushing But like I say, my, my technique here is to do the edges first just to get most of the paint off. And then when you're down to not much paint, that's when, you know, you can start doing the little circular motions on some of the flat areas. And of course, I'm going to be painting over a lot of these areas anyway, so I'm just generally doing all of it for now. See how the paint's coming off so I can start doing my circle motions? It just gives you a very nice smooth finish. If, it's, if this was a typical dry brush where you got yourself a big floppy dry brush like that and you just went dip -dip 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 like that, that would get all the edges for you but you'd also get this grainy finish and that's not what I want. What I'm trying to do, and I've explained this before with Tamiya Chrome Silver, if you just do a straight dry brush you do get that grainy effect because you're just doing a light coat of the metallic particles. Metallic paints are a paint with metallic particles floating in them. And that's where the metallic comes from. By doing the little circle motions and gently working it in, like this, slowly and carefully, basically what you're doing is you're putting all the uh, putting all the particles down, but you're kind of aligning them a little bit, as best you can with the paint. You're kind of forcing them all to be a bit more aligned. So you're hiding brush marks, and also, because they're a bit more aligned, in places you will get a lot more brighter bling from the paint and it often will give you a completely different color than if you just painted these if you just painted these like without doing a dry brush it would look a different color completely 
Now these are coming out a little bit cleaner than my Imperial Knight, but that's fine. Because we've got more shades to come. So we're on this flat bit now. I've got a bit of the paint off on the edges. So I can start doing little circle motions on here. And like I say, the beauty of this is it just stops, removes any, you wouldn't really get brush marks, but just that grainy effect. And I've said before, when I was a kid and I used to do lots of drawing with, and I used to like do pen and ink drawings and then colour them in with coloured pencils. I learnt that colouring with coloured pencils by doing circle motions is a good way to remove any sort of, not brush marks, but the kind of pencil marks. So you get nice solid colours rather than obvious pencil lines. Always works wonders doing circles. And this is just a good way to build up shade. So this is difficult because if this was just a video build, I'd have shown this like for two minutes and then cut away to the next bit. But of course, when it's a live stream, you have to sit here and watch me do the whole thing. <laughs> I have to find something to talk about for 20 minutes while I do the dry Bigger, brushing. Bigger. Ooh, what's that? That was uh, Merlin's Muse. Thank you very much, Merlin. That's very kind of you. My health is going down. I'm down to 28,877 healths. See, it's going down. For those of you who weren't here at the beginning or haven't watched one of these before, if you don't know what the health bar here is, uh, this thing here, the black bit is all the health that's been taken off. I started off with 100,000 healths uh, and now I'm down to 28,000. I am the stream boss at the moment. I am the boss of the stream. Uh, and what you guys are doing is taking down my health bit by bit. Uh, and then basically whoever gets me to zero healths and kills me and does this on camera because I was off shot there. Uh, whoever gets me down to zero healths becomes the new stream boss. And that person wins a kit of their choice using the money raised through you taking my health down how can you take my health down how's the money raised you can do a super chat which is the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat window uh, you can if you wish do a, a tip in the tip jar which is here uh, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru you can pop a tip through uh, help support this channel uh, or if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you can just subscribe to the channel as well. Each of those three things will take my health down a little bit. Uh, I was trying, hoping to set it up so that if you subscribe to me on Patreon, you would also take my health down, but it doesn't seem to be active that at the moment. It's not set up by um, Streamlabs at the minute, or Patreon. So that's not an option, sadly, right now. So either of those three methods, and with the, with the super chat and the tips, the more you put through, the more of my health you take off. Uh, the money that you raise doing the tips and through the super chat is all being collected and put to one side to pay for the prize. Whoever wins to pay for the kit they want. Uh, and initially it's we, we said it's any Warhammer kit that you want. That's the prize. Whatever Warhammer kit you want. But it doesn't have to be Warhammer. It could be something else. Because I know a lot of you out there like your Gundams. So it could be a Gundams. But just so you know... So the money that you raise through doing the, the super chats and the tips, that's where that money goes to. It goes towards the prize fund. And right now, with me down to 28,000 health, so over halfway, right now you're looking at about 200 quid in the, in the pot. So that's a pretty nice model you could snag for yourself if you were the one that got my health down to zero right now. And there's probably, I mean, I don't know how much it will be, but there's probably another 100 quid or even more to go yet before I before I actually get knocked off a stream boss. So it's going up nicely, it could be, you know, it's pretty much right now paid for, you could afford any Warhammer kit or kits, because I'll tell you what the budget is, you can spend the budget on whatever you want. Uh, it could be a nice perfect grade. Uh, I think a couple hundred quid covers most perfect grade kits. And by the time I get to zero health, that's probably all the perfect grade kits. You never know, it might be a Neo Zeon or a Dendrobium. <laughs> Who can say? Uh, but basically, yeah, when you get me down to zero, whoever becomes the new stream boss, I'll let them know what the balance is, how much is in the kitty. You then tell me what you would like me to buy for you. I will order it, have it sent to you, and it's yours to build and play with. It's yours, you win, that's what you win. 
So that's where we've been going. Now we've been doing it for about, I don't know, six, seven weeks and we've got down to 28,000 healths. When you become stream boss, uh, there's no benefit for you apart from you've just won a really swanky kit of some sort. But when you become stream boss, everybody then works to take your health down. You start with 100,000 healths. Uh, everybody works to take your health down and whoever defeats you, they then win a kit of their choice. Same principle, I, the money's collected together and I will then buy them a kit of their choice. And it'll go on forever. Uh, every time somebody becomes a new stream boss, they win awesomeness. And again, it can be anything, pretty much. The only thing we're not sure of and we're a bit dubious of is Forge Will because Forge Will comes with a whole host of issues that I would have no interest in getting involved in. Like if you if you won a forge wheel kit and I ordered it and it came with all the wrong pieces and deformed and warped and unbuildable, I'd be like, it's your problem. You need to contact Forge World and tell them how it's you didn't pay for it, but you need it replacing. It's just it's a nightmare. So that's why we said initially, do it on camera dear. Initially we said no forge world, but you never know. You never know. Right, so I'm being careful around these bronzy bits here. Just to, this is why I like this brush because I can be kind of careful in my application. It's too neat. But I mean, fairly neat. I will come and have a look at chat in a moment. Um, so, yes, so if you've never done it before, if you want to dine in, say, get my health down a bit, uh, do, a, do a tip or do a super chat, dollar symbol. Uh, and the bigger one you put through, the more health you take off, the closer I get to defeat. Well, it's going to be pretty sweet. I can't, I, I didn't actually physically work out what the budget is once, you know, I mean, I know how much it's like a per dollar thing or per pound. I can't remember what it is. So many healths per dollar, but I don't know what the final would be. So it could be, I'm over 200 quid now. Could be 300 quid. Could be 400 quid. That's a pretty nice selection you have there for your prize. And it can be anything, anything you want. We'll have a conversation. There's probably a few limitations, like, you know, you have to include chipping in the in the budget amount. So when somebody mentioned earlier on about could they win the door, it's like, well, if the final amount is enough to pay for the door and the 300 quid shipping, then yeah, I'd expect it wouldn't be. Do, 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 Sprugler Addict, question, I own the same airbrush as you, Fox. Please will you make a video of how to strip it down as I scares the crap out of me. I thought I had done, um, but I can do. In fact, if you give me a, give me a minute, I'll show you in a bit. Because it takes literally minutes. Uh, but I've always joked and said, tips for a new airbrush. Uh, airbrushing person. First time you ever use an airbrush. First time you take it apart to clean it and the trigger falls out on a normal regular airbrush, you'll, you'll crap yourself. I think you bust it. Don't worry. Everybody goes through that. <laughs> now you see here I'm just doing a more traditional dry brush here. I'm just going scribby scribby scribby. That's purely because this is all raised detail. There's no real curvy soft areas here for me to worry about so much. Um, so I'm not being too delicate on this. I'm just going on these. On this bit I have done. But here it's just scribby detail, so I can just scrub away at those quickly. And dry brushing is a very quick process. You can take your time or you can do it quickly and it always looks good. Okay, so I'll do a bit more. A bit more on this leg, I think. Do, 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 do. Nearly done. We won't do both of them. We'll just do this one. But you're actually getting to see me do work and everything. Now there is a problem. Somebody's on holiday. Ooh. Mike Mountain Holidays Yahoo says Dad. <gasps> Andy Butcher's in. Hi Andy. Butcher that model. Dave's in. Hey Dave. Uh, do do do. Do do do. How you doing, David? My old. Are you on a lunch break or are you not working today? Yeah, Andy Butcher. Got to run, guys. Thanks, Fox, and have fun, everyone. Thanks for coming in, dude. Don't forget to watch later on to see if you won, because we'll do the prize win. And I don't know who's going to win because we'll pull it live on air, live on telly. So don't forget to check in later on. Uh, it's very easy to see. Just scrub the video forward till you see the wheel of giveaways and then see who the winner is. That's <laughs> what I do to remind myself who the hell won every week. I'm like, right, who won? I'll just go and check. Right, now see on this bit here where it's this flat cowling around his head. Here, I'm just going to do the, the circle, circle movements. Very gently. Not a lot of pressure. Just very, very gently start building that up. 
And all it means is you do pick out the edges, but it just means you also get to get paint on the other areas as well, except I've got no paint on the brush now. <laughs> There's a little too little paint there, I think. Uh, yes, Dave, uh, Dave, are you on, uh, are you working today and on a break? Having a fag break or are you off today? Have I, did I miss that? Lee Gallup says the first thing anyone should do with a new airbrush is take it apart and learn it. Yeah. Now the one thing I haven't done with my Neo is taken it apart to the point where I've taken the trigger and stuff out because that frankly terrifies me as well. <laughs> I'm not doing that. A normal airbrush I can take apart. That one, no. No, no, no. But yeah, if you give me a minute, I'll show you in a minute. It takes but a moment. Right, so we've got some circly, circly effect going on there. The best advice I can give with dry brushing is don't think about it. Don't be consciously thinking about how you're going to do it. Just go in and just, just scrub around. Do circle movements. Say so literally, it's circle movements if you want to get smooth blends. Just back and forth swishing movements if you want to get just edge. Pick out the edges and get a slightly rougher blend. If you're not too fussed. And we'll do more when we do the armour. We'll do the dry brushing as well. The dry brushing. We'll do the dry brushing. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And again, no harm. On this bit here, I'm being a bit more flicky flicky rather than circles because this is all raised detail. There's no real smooth areas here to, to worry about. Whereas under there, I can do the circle circle if you can see it because there is a flat area. Now, some of these areas I will be painting over, but for the point, for this moment in time, I'm just going to do the whole thing and worry about painting other details later. So that will probably suffice. And there we have the dry brushing done on that one particular dude. Yay! How easy was that? Dry brushing is one of the funnest things because you can't really screw it up. Let's be honest. You can you can you can go too far and end up with just a flat colour. I'll put it flat so you can see it. Meh. I'll, I'll put it I'll put it at a funky angle. Let me put something under it so you can see it. There you go. A bit better? No, not a bit better. You can't see it. There we go. Uh, do bear in mind, of course, on camera, it looks a lot more dark and contrasted than in real life. It's not quite as, it doesn't look, look it kind of looks like a black and white ink drawing, but it's not. Uh, Tim Al says, hi Fox, dropping in for a short while as it's near midnight here. Nice armager, lol. Thank you very much for dropping in, Tim. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. Uh, crack open a tinny. It'll be fine. If it's after midnight, yeah. Although if it's work tomorrow, yeah. Or school tomorrow, yeah, maybe not. Um... So right, so that's that bit done. So we have a dry brush. So that's just a quick metallic dry brush on there. Again, I'm not looking to make it super clean. I want to keep it slightly dark and and keep the darkness in the recesses because these are going to look scruffy and dirty. Not as bad as maybe the Zaku. But notice how I didn't do anything over the copper bits. We're going to do those separately. So what we need to do now is let that dry for a minute and then go over with another shade. We need to do another shade on here now to make it look even more dirty. So I'm going to replace my water again. If you're using metallic paints, here's a handy tip. If you're using any metallic paints, silvers, golds, coppers, anything like that, good rule of thumb is before you go off and do any other kind of paint, swap your water out because what you'll find is the water is now full of little metallic flakes floating. Now if I started painting red or green or blue or something else, all you get is metallic flakes in it. So I'm going to change my water out again and I promise next time I'll actually have some jugs of water sitting around. So give me a second. Oh, my foot, oh, my ankle. Oh, oh that's painful. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, clear my throat. Uh, right, so there we go. So water changed. Yes, I will. I promise next time I'll have a, an empty jug and a jug of water set up, so I don't have to do that. Uh, so there we go. So that's that. I'm going to leave that for a minute to dry. I'm going to have a swig of the tea. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to get some new tissue. 
Uh, it is quarter to five. Uh, quarter to five. So I think it's time we did some giveaways and that. We're halfway there. So we'll let that dry for a bit. So yes, dry brushing. It's really good. It's a really quick way to do it. If you were doing a little individual figure, I probably wouldn't recommend dry brushing so much with normal paints because at that, scale, that size, they do tend to come up looking a bit grainy and horrible. But for something big like a vehicle or metallics, for sure metallics, dry brushing is a really quick and easy way to make awesome blends and shades. Right, so I'll have a quick look at the chat. We'll do some giveaways and then we'll get another coat of stuff on that. Uh, or tell you what, tell you what, let's do something a bit different. I've got the hairdryer. What I'm going to do is give this a quick blast with the hairdryer. One second. Oh, that was a bad idea. You're in a really hot room on a really hot day to blast a hairdryer. You're an idiot, Fox. What I'm going to do before we do the giveaways and stuff, uh, we need to get a shade on here. So I may as well do that now, and then that gives us 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, for the shade to dry while we're doing the giveaways. So let me get a bit of paper. As with anything, Whenever you're doing shades or washes or anything like that, put something down to keep your workspace clean. There we go. Because I don't want to spill. I've decided I'm going to have to get, because I, I got these nice these nice grey coloured cutting mats because they work well on camera. And I thought, I'll keep these clean, and then I totally didn't. So I'm going to need to get more now. So I'm going to have to get a little work mat that I can film on, and this big one and keep it clean. So put some paper down. So I'll get a coat on here, we'll get a shade on here, uh, and then we'll have a look at chat and do some giveaways. So what I'm going to do for this, we've got the uh, Balthazar Gold on the gold parts as a base colour. We've got the Lead Belcher with some Null Noil, and then Dry Brushed with the Iron Breaker. What we need to do now is do another shade, and for that we're going to use Agrax Earth Shade. Now what was going to happen here is two things. One, it's going to make the silver stuff look more dirty again. But two, it's also going to shade the Balthazar Gold. So what I need to do is find my little placemat for shade pots, which is somewhere, I don't know where, uh, I'll put it down somewhere. There is, oh there it is, it's a placemat with some blue tack on it, and then I can't spill it. I have got an anti-spill device, very kindly made for my, by uh, Mike Mountain, my dad which is brilliant, but doesn't fit shade in it. It's no use for shades, it's the wrong size. And I, also, I don't want to get it covered in shade because it would spoil it. So I've got my Agrax Earth Shade, which is a brown earthy tone. And there's no being careful with this. No being careful at all. It is just a case of big fat shade brush. Get it on. Oh, put my visor on so I can see. And then uh, let's get it on. Not being careful with this at all, just getting it on there. Now this is the kind of thing you could do with inks. Somebody mentioned inks earlier on. Shades are really just, effectively, paints, very thin paints, but like in a in a acrylic medium. So a shade is basically just like in Citadel terms. You can make your own shade by just adding some of a regular Citadel paint to some Lamian medium. You've made a shade. That's pretty much how they do it. Uh, now with inks, you can you can use inks as shades or as washes like this. But like I was saying before, you want to thin them with an acrylic medium of some sort, be that say Lamian medium or Vallejo's uh, glaze medium or Pledge, two times more shine. Because if you were just to thin this with thin your ink with water, it wouldn't behave the same way. It wouldn't stay in all the recesses as well. Where it was on a flat surface, it would kind of get tide marks and all that kind of nonsense. It just wouldn't look the same. You want it to behave the way like these shades do. Uh, so that's why you thin it with. Pledge is ideal. That's what's known as a magic wash. I'm not on camera. Am I? That's what's known in the industry as a magic wash, and it has been for many, many decades. I can't remember who came up with it. 
It's a very old technique. In those days, it was future or clear. It's the same stuff. It was mixing an ink with future or clear to make your own glaze or shade. Uh, it gives you a glossy finish, but of course, when you're working on a model, you're going to matte varnish it anyway and do other things, so it doesn't really matter. But the idea of a shade like this is you want to just slap it on and get it on quite thick because you want it to collect. You don't want it to pool necessarily, but you want to get it on quite thick so it can pool and give you a good result. And whether you're using, you know, a Citadel shade like this, whether you're using the Army Painter Quick Shade, which is basically a big paint tin that you just dip your model in. It's kind of very similar to this. It just takes 24 hours to dry, which is a bit rubbish. Um, or whether you're using inks. You want to get it on quite thickly. You can do a pin wash with it and be very careful. Or you can do it like this and just really slap it. I need to get some tissue. Really slap it everywhere. Because what I want to do is get it in the recesses, but also change the colour on the rest of the vehicle. Because I want it to look dirty. I don't want it to look like just shaded metal. So while it's still wet for a few moments, you've got a chance just to move it around a bit and stop it pooling. You've got to be quick, you can't sit around, because if you leave it to pool, it will pool. They are quite thick and viscous, so if it pools anywhere massively, it will kind of cover up detail and be like a visible blob. So you want to make sure you try and get rid of any massive excess, but don't worry about it too much. And if you leave it too long, of course, you'll start getting brush marks and that goes a bit wrong, so just work quickly. But don't worry, don't think about it too much. Because one of the beauties of not thinking about it too much is you get happy accidents. And happy accidents never happen if you're all careful and cautious. So that's going to do there. So we're going to leave that for just sit for a little while. I might have to give it some hair dryer action in a bit. Uh, oh, we need to put some on there. Uh, but it's, it's gone into all the Balthazar gold and shaded that nicely as well. So I've got some nice relief on there before we do anything else to it. I'll just get that excess off. But there, this is the thing with me actually doing work on telly now. Instead of just talking to you guys for three hours, it's actually me doing work. I kind of tend to ignore you in the chat because I can't do that and this. So I do apologise. But you're pretty self-sufficient. You talk amongst yourselves in chat. You know what you're doing. But I do tend to miss stuff, so. Right, so there we go, that's that done. Bit thick around the back there. We go like that, bit thick around the back. Right, so we'll leave that to one side. I may have to give it a blast with the hairdryer to expedite matters. So I shall just get rid of this tissue. I'll just wash the brush off first. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll have a look in chat and see what chat's doing. Uh, I will. Do the giveaways. Uh, we will have a look at my Neo and take it apart. I say I've never taken the trigger out, but I can show you the rest where we just take it apart as if you're going to give it a, a field strip and clean because that's not too bad. It's not too hard. So we'll just get this brush rinsed off a bit. Yes, I'm storming brush that way, but it's a shade brush. I don't care. I will clean my brushes properly later off camera with my with my brush cleaner right uh, I need to very quickly find and I found them it's cool try and keep the tubes from your brushes it's very important that you do that uh, because you need them for storing your brushes so I'm going to put them in there okay so I shall put him he's not going to drip on the anywhere so I can put him there get rid of that right uh, let us do some tea and then some giveaways I'll have a quick look at the chat, see what the chat's doing first. Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, Heidi Dave, you one lucky dude, I just had three days off. Oh, I'm guessing Dave, um, butcher that model is off work then. Uh, just finished Fox, says Dave. Oh yeah, nice one. Uh, I took my Neo completely apart, terrified mate, I have to download the instructions from the internet, says Tony Blackwell. Hi Dave, really need to catch up with your Thunderbird chibi bill. Been too busy on summer holes and watching 3D printer vids. Uh, yeah, butcher that model. Go and check out his channel. He does um, he does videos of um, builds focusing on not spending a lot of money and keeping it nice and simple for younger builders. 
So go and check it out. He's doing a little chibi build of the Thunderbird 2. Wow, chat's gone everywhere. Uh, Lynn Dipple, wish I could look up for a job in bed. Ooh, that sounds wrong, sorry. <laughs> Del. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because the Warhammer Sunday logo is the way, but it looks like the paper says hookers search for jobs in bed. Wait, what does it actually say? Does it say? I didn't even, look, I didn't even notice. 59% of job seekers search for beds, jobs while in bed. <laughs> Hookers search for jobs whilst in bed. Probably do. Uh, as Ted would say, slap it on. Uh, oh, Fester's in. Fester 67's workshop. Hey, Colin. Go and check out his channel. Uh, lots of good stuff on there. Welcome, Colin. Hope you're feeling better, matey. Uh, Fox, too thin coat, says Ghost Lyle. Now, when it comes to shades, slap it on. Uh, when you want it to look really, really filthy, slap it on. So you see how it's, it's gone now from looking like... That was just with the Nuln Oil, and it looks like silver with some dark shade on it. Now it's got a more oily, greasy look to it. It'll change as it dries, it'll lighten a little bit, and you'll see. But it, it gets that more kind of browny, oily, greasy look. Uh, Sprue Glue Addict, slap it on. Festa 67 says, slowly, he's getting better slowly. Take care of yourself, dude. Uh, Wayne Haywood can't talk doing decals, lol. Uh, Stefan Last, oh hi Stefan, watching the show and trying to finish writing my review of the new battery operated orchestra album is not doing my brain any favours. I think I've written about 12 words. You need to go off and listen to, uh, well, keep this in the background and have my Coldfields Amarok play. That will sort your brain out. Have Amarok playing in the background. Sorts your brain out perfectly. Get well soon, Ted. Wait, no, he's Ted in. Ted's not with us, is he? Spruity Gladic says, get well soon, Ted. Ted's not with us, I don't think. Or if he is. Uh, I don't think he is. Uh, Lynn sent me a message saying, do you want me to be a mod? Um, yes, what I might do later on. I can't do it now. Uh, I might actually set some of you guys as mods. It's, it's not that I need it. Because I know TK uh, and uh, Ted and Chris are all set as mods. But unfortunately, none of them are in chat at the minute. Um, and Chris is saying he couldn't he couldn't be in for long. It just means we do get a spoon in chat, we, like that guy earlier on, but we don't get that very often. That's like probably the second or third time it's ever happened to me doing live streams. So I wouldn't worry too much. Um, right, so let's do some giveaways. So, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? My brain is completely stopped now. Right, so if you remember, let's, let's do some stickers first. Da 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 da! Ba -da -ba -ba -da. You can win some stickers. Let's do the stickers. These are fun. Now, as always, uh, we're going to do some sticker giveaways. Now, if you would, uh, I haven't. I think I've had one. Let me get my emails out. Uh, I've had one, I think. But what I'll do is I'll ask a question, and if whoever gets the answer right first wins a couple of these stickers. If you've got a question and answer that you want me to read out on the show, if you could, if you've got a question and you know the answer to it, drop me an email. I'll put the email address up. Do do do. Drop me an email to. Uh, modelmakingguru at gmail.com uh, and include your name well include the question and the answer to the question your name and your address and I'll send you a sticker if I read the question out but you need to include your name and address so I don't have to then mail you back and say thanks what's your name and address because that's frustrating it is uh, but I think I do have one question uh, from last time do 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 did I have one do I have one that's not even the right email. I'm in the wrong damn email account. Hang on. Idiot. Stickers. I've got enough for now, says Lynn. Merlin's Muse stickers. I haven't got any of the Team Inept ones left. So, it's just it's just mine today. Uh, right. We have a question from Gerwin Moores. And we have a question from David Scott. So, that should actually be alright, to be honest. I've got two of them. And I can do my number on the back of the hand one. What I need to do first is actually... Give my glasses a quick clean because there's a big blob of something on my glasses that's right in the wrong place. Right, so we've got a question from David and a question from Gerwin. Um, Gerwin, let me know if you want me to send you more stickers. You've got millions of stickers, but you're always able to have more. Uh, David Scott, you sent me a question answer. Thank you very much. I'll use it now. You need to send me your name and address so I can send you a sticker. If you don't want a sticker, that's fine. Just don't send me your name and address. Uh, but if you do want a sticker, do let me know. If you've mailed me before and I've had your name and address to send you stuff before, 
I'll need it again anyway. This is to everybody. If you've won something before and you win something again, I'll still need your details because I don't keep your address and stuff. As soon as I send you a prize out or a sticker, I delete the email. So there you go. Right, so let's get these done. We'll do three of these. So what you need to do first, before we do anything, before we go anywhere or ask any questions, you need to refresh your browser right now because usually within an hour or so of starting, there's a, there's a, a, a lag between the text uh, the chat and the video so before we do anything else hit your browser now i will have a quick swig of the tea while you do that hit browser hit refresh do it now mm -mm. and then when the page reloads make sure to drag the slider all the way across to the right so you're up to date with the stream although if you're in the middle of refreshing you won't hear me that so when your screen has refreshed drag the slider on the on the screen right all the way to the right Right, are we ready? Have you all refreshed? Yes. Why are a sticker so addictively awesome? This says Sprugly Waddy. I don't know, but everybody goes crazy for stickers. It could just say sticker on it. It could just be a sticker that just says this is a sticker and people still want it. Uh, Sprugly Addict says I never win anything. Yeah, but Sprugly Addict, if you send me a question and answer, you get a sticker. So there's the easy way around it if I use the question and answer. See? <laughs> Think smart. Don't work hard, work smart. Right, so the first question. Uh, first question is, uh, again, I don't fact check these. So, is everybody ready? Sprugler Addict says, Chelsea naught, Man City 2, East 5, 4, 4, 4, 5. Right, ready? First question, this is from David Scott. David, send me your name and address if you want to stick it. Who directed, this is nothing to do with anything. Who directed The Nightmare Before Christmas? Who directed The Nightmare Before Christmas? Now, I don't fact check these. I just look for whoever gives me the same answer he's given me. So who directed The Nightmare Before Christmas? And I, I would have got this wrong, so there you go. Go, by the way. Again, I don't I don't know if this is right or not. Nobody's got it right yet. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have got this right either, apparently. <laughs> nope, nobody's got it yet. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, direct it. You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to I'm going to be a bit unusual. I'm going to fact check this. I'm going to fact check this. I feel compelled to fact check it. Give me one second uh, because I've got this horrible feeling uh, that the answer may not be actually correct and that may not help anybody. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, for Christmas. Hang on, hang on. Do 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 do. I've got to. I've got to. Hang on, hang on. It's all gone wrong now. It's all gone wrong. Right. Uh, okay, yes. Um, right, okay. A little bit of fact checking probably was a good thing there uh, because I had actually been given the wrong answer completely <clears throat> by David. But don't worry, David, I'll still send you a sticker anyway. Just send me an M address. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> when David sent me the mail, he said, "Who directed the Nightmare Before Christmas?" Wes Craven. I, I wouldn't know, so I, I would have thought Tim Burton. Um, it's not. It was, in fact, uh, Henry Selick. So, my little checking now has just brought up Henry Selick. So I shall find out who put Henry Selick first, because that's the right answer. Uh, was uh, Gwenelle Dupre said Selick. So Gwenelle. Well done, you've won yourself a couple of stickers. Um, yeah, normally I don't fact check them, 
But that one I was like, mm, yeah, doesn't seem, doesn't seem right that one. But don't worry, David, still send me your name and address. I read your question out, so it'll work. I'll send you some stickers. Uh, Gwinnell, name and address, please, and I'll send you some stickery stickers. Well done. Yeah, that one just, there was, there was, there was something not right in that one. Sally James says Mike Mountain. Yes. Uh, I think he was getting confused with Nightmare on, uh, on Elm Street, perhaps. So, yes. Go from the first answer, Fox, a scale model vamp. Yeah, I would have thought it was Tim Burton, but it wasn't. It was uh, Selick. Right, anyway, next question. So that's that one. I've not laughed so much in ages, says Sprugly Waddict. Yeah, it doesn't always, you know, it doesn't always work. Uh, right, so uh, next question, which I also haven't fact-checked, but it's only because that one didn't seem quite right that I was like... Eh. The next one uh, is from Gerwin, who usually gives me the gives me the goods on the questions. So let's have a look. Uh, great to see you back. Hope Mama Fox is doing well. Thank you. Here is a topical question for you. Okay, it's kind of UK centric, but if you're outside the UK, you can um, probably still figure it out on the interwebs. Everybody ready? Question. When was the hottest day of 2018 so far in the UK? So when was the hottest day of 2018 so far in the UK? I don't need to know the temperature and stuff. I'll just go for the for the date. Tom Selleck, Magnum directed it, says Speedy QA. Yeah, he directed it with his moustache of awesomeness. So what was the hottest day of 2018 in the UK so far? Do 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 do. Tony Blackwell says yesterday. Yeah, I need a date, dude. I need a date. Uh, oh, straight in bop with July 27th, says George Flouter, who's won a few times now. You keep winning these stickers, dude. Uh, yes, it was uh, July 27th. Uh, who, which does, I, I, I don't want to open the... Uh, link that you sent with the information, but it was apparently the it was recorded in Heathrow on the twenty on the wow get my teeth in. It was recorded in Heathrow on Friday, July the twenty seventh. Of course, it was down south. It's always down south. Uh, he also says, "P.S. Any chance of a big E model sticker? He was supposed to get one from Ted. Um, I just sent some out on Friday. I can't remember if I sent you one. If I if you do, oh, yeah, I sent about four out on Friday." <clears throat> you, <clears throat> you might have it by Monday, by tomorrow, because it'll be on the way to you. I send them first class. I don't send. I send them first class, so I need to clear my throat. <clears throat> I send this stuff out first class, uh, so you should have that hopefully Monday. If you haven't, if you're in the chat on Monday's live stream, uh, if you're in the chat on Monday's live show, uh, just let me know in chat and I'll get one sent out to you. I can do. It's not a problem. I've got loads of them. Uh, I just think I might have sent you one already because Ted sent me all the uh, uh, mails for people that were waiting for a big sticker because he couldn't get out to get the big envelopes. Um, right, so that's that one. Uh, or in fact, as I've just read your question out, I'll send you a sticker anyway. There you go. You might have two big stickers in that case. There you go. So don't don't worry about it. And Gwinnell actually sent me the name and address <laughs> in their question. Yep, yeah, that's those two done. So if you want to ask a, if you want an easy way to win a quest, to win a sticker, send me a question and an answer. Um, tr try and make the answer correct because that makes it less complicated for me. I don't do fact checking as we've just found out, but try and make it correct. Uh, and I'll send you a sticker if I read it out. Just include your name and address. Now for the last one, one more chance. You know what this is. Uh, was that a spider running across the Citadel paint, says Butcher, that model. No, it was not a Huntsman spider. <laughs> spider. There you go. Spider. <laughs> uh, right, I need to close that down because I've got a million windows open. I can't see what I'm doing. Uh, look, spider, see? Whoever wins that sticker <laughs> and hasn't watched this show, be like, what, what the hell is that? Uh, if you don't know what that's about, go and look. Go and look at my latest uh, mailbag, mailbox mystery package opening. It's from Kenneth. It's just fantastic. I get pranked live on telly. Uh, one more question. So I've just put the pen away. I need to write a number on my hand. Uh, not yet. Not Wheel of Fortune yet. Going to write a number on my hand. Uh, let us think of a number. 
Okay, I'm gonna th I'm gonna have written a number down on my hand of hands. It is between seven thirty. No, it's between seven hundred and forty-five and seven hundred and fifty-five. Between seven, what did I say? Seven hundred and forty-five and seven hundred and fifty-five. Go. And then we'll have a quick look at the chat and then we'll see if this is dried off yet. So, what number is on my hand between 7.45 and 7.55? Uh, straight away, BAP Earl D says 7.47. Of course it was 7.47. It's the easiest number to write down. So, Earl D, thank you very much. You've won another sticker. It was the same people that win these stickers. I don't know how this works. Earl D, well done. Send me your name and address. You'll get more stickers. That's the stickers done. Now, as I've always said, uh, the way I try and do things is I try and uh, be regular with my sending out of stickers and things. Uh, I try and do it like on the Monday after the show and it never happens. Um, so what I tend to do is if I can't get to the post office, I'll probably leave it till I go once or twice a month. I usually go to the post office once or twice a month anyway. So for prizes and stickers, I tend to leave it towards the end of the month and then send them all out in a big batch. If I can get them out before then, I will. So if you're waiting for a sticker, don't panic. All the stickers and prizes up to this week have gone on Friday. They're all sent out. So there should be nobody waiting now apart from people from today. Uh, but don't panic if it takes a week or two to get the prizes or the stickers because I usually let them pile up and then do them all in one big go. And I'm running out of boxes to send prizes out, so... Right, so we need to do last week's prize, and we need to do this week's wheel of giveaways. So, last week's prize, like we said before, oh, if I can find it, is the huge, huge Warhammer poster. The beautiful little, ever so slightly gel, edible, edible gel looking thing from Tamir. Uh, the rather fantastic Rick Dom notebook, ruled notebook. And I'll throw in my copy of White Dwarf from this month, last month, with the Imperial Knichts. Lots of lots of things, lots of pictures, oh, lots of pictures of soul. It's all Soul Wars and Imperial Knights because that's what came out when it came out. So, look at that. Oh, I'll buy that for a dollar. So that's what we're giving away. We need to find out. I'll take my email address off. We need to find out who is going to win this goodness. So, we know what's going to happen. It's time for me to mess up and press all the wrong buttons. So we need to do a screen share. Da -da 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 -da. And we need to go. Yes, we need to go to last week's stream, as you can see here. Last week's stream, everybody can see that. I hope. Let's just make the chat up to date so I can see if anybody says anything. I've had it with all these mother flapping snacks on this mother loving seven four seven. Says Speedy Q eight. Oh flip! I can't remember if I commented last week. Well, you've got about a minute before I get down to pressing the button. So if you're really fast. Uh, somebody's texting me something. Why is my phone on silent? Right, so, uh, yes, we have all the comments from last week, and I will refresh the page before I press the button, just in case everybody's going, crap, I forgot to do it, oh! So, I'm going to give you a minute, I'm going to waffle for a minute. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm padding it out now. Um, so, yeah, all I asked you to do was... Uh, put down a name for the Griff Charger that was on, I'm going to show it but you can't even see it, the Griff Charger that was on the big uh, poster and we had some great names like Ignacio McBeakers, uh, Sir Fluffy Nuts, the Giant Feathered Floof von Schartenfreud, uh, Ralph is thy name, Ralph will be thy name, uh, Binky, Teddy Firehooter, calls it a Sky Rat, his name is obviously Bob, the most epic of names, uh, Reggie Tarquin, his name is Beaky, he hugs him and squeezes him and calls him George. So we had loads of options, early ent entries. Uh, we have, what do we have, 19 comments. So, yeah, we're going to pick a random. So I'm going to refresh the page first. Because I'm a nice guy, I'm going to refresh the page. that you have to get replaced. Uh, this is me putting on my customs uh, customs and uh, exercise gloves. Refresh the page to get any comment comments that have just gone on there in the last 30 seconds. We're going to go to the YouTube random comment picker to randomly pick a comment randomly. We're going to load the comments. Do you, and I don't think I've commented on it this week, so it might not pull me. So are we ready? <sighs> Let's give it a go. It's probably going to be a name you'll recognise. It usually is. So ready? I'm going to randomly pick the winner. So in three, two, one. 
Frozen Zilu says his name is obviously Bob, the most epic of names in fantasy. So Frozen Zilu, I don't recognise that person, uh, but well done, you have one. Uh, I don't think you're anybody that I've seen in chat, but well done, well done. I hope you watch this. Uh, and what you need to do, Frozen Zilu, I'm going to leave that up there so I can see it. And I'm going to go back to here. So Frozen Zilu. Well done, you've won yourself this goodness. All you need to do is drop me an email to modelmakingguru at gmail.com uh, with your name, your address, and put down that you've won the poster and book and stuff, just so I know it's not a sticker email. Uh, I need you to mail me because I treat my email inbox as, as a list of people to send stuff to. It's like a sticker, 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 prize, sticker. So just send me your name and address that you've won this week's prize, the one with the white dwarf and the books and cutting mat. And we'll get that out to you. As I say, I might try and get it sent out this week. Uh, but if not, don't worry. It can take two or three weeks because I, I tend to build up a pile of stuff to take to the post office. Because it's a pain in the arse going to the post office uh, all the time. So I tend to leave it for a batch. So those are yours. <coughs> I need to clear my throat. Frozen's Yellow, thank you very much for taking part. Now, it's time to find out what we're giving away this week. Do, 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 do. You know what time it is. I've got to queue up five different things now. Hang on. You know what time it is. It's time for... Yes, it's time for the Wheel of Giveaways. I'm getting better at these little audio cues now. Time for the Wheel of Giveaways. So we have uh, less things now. If you remember, we have a big pile of stuff that people have gifted to me. Uh, or people I have things that I happen to have lying around. But mostly it's stuff that people have gifted to me. So thank you very much to everybody who sent me stuff to give away. Uh, it's getting less and less each week as we're giving stuff away. So this week we need to find out what we're giving away. So if everybody's ready, I will press the most annoying noise in the world button. So are we ready to find out what this week's prize is? Now remember, there is some awesome, awesome stuff in here. There's some little silly things and there's some really seriously kick-ass stuff. So, ready. Are we ready? In three, a two, a one. Awesome noise. I'm not awesome noise. Apparently you can't change that noise, not very easily. We are giving away... Bam, 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 bam. Oh yeah! This week's prize is Man in Suit. Now you won't know what that is necessarily, but I know what the hell that is. Let me do the closed down music and we'll show you what that is and you're going to love this. You're going to be falling over yourself. Are you ready? Right. Get ready for this. Get ready. That's, well, that's like a song. Right, this is what this is what next week's prize is. This is the best one so far. Because this is not big enough to go on. It's too big to go on. It's a Godos. It's a Zoids Godos. It's the um, mass, it's high end master model, number 28. It's a Godos. And it looks mint. <clears throat> and you can win this. See, I told you some of these prizes would kick ass. Some are like silly fun things, and some are just absolutely the dog's bits. All absolutely mint, untouched, everything in there. Have you got water slides or stickers? I never know, I've not done one of these. Comes with a little tiny thing of water slides. Yeah, get in. So that is this week's prize, is the HMM number 28 Godos that I can't fit on camera. So, I need it precious, says George Flouter. The war general very coolly gallops, goes, ooh. Uh, Spid says, oh, cool, yes, please. Jonathan, uh, tired as a nun. I've just read that it's tired. No, it's not. Tirasad Tanon. Tirasad Tanon. There's a joke in there somewhere. Says, nice. Butcher that model. Wow, cool. Phillies, awesome. Merlin's muse. Eek, drool, says Scale Vamp. It's a transmorphous, says Spid. Uh, oh, nice. Hopefully that will be mine or mine. I had so many of the motorised Tommy Zoids way back. Love them. Yeah, I've only ever made one when I was a little kid. So that is going to be the prize. So if you want to win this HMM, which is basically is like their equivalent of uh, Tommy's version of Master Grade. <clears throat> if you would like to win this, and it is quite big, then all you need to do, same as every week, is simply put a comment on this week's show. When, it's, when the stream is finished and it's just a normal video, put a comment on there. Uh, and all you need to put a comment on this week <clears throat> is um, tell me why dinosaurs are awesome. 
And in this situation, because they are, is a valid argument. So it doesn't need to be a good argument, but just tell me, if if if, if our answer is anything other than because they are, uh, then tell me why dinosaurs are awesome. So there you go. So wait till this video is finished. Uh, wait till it's a normal video. And then just put your comment on. Next week we shall pull a winner and see who wins that awesome kit. I need to clear my throat again. <clears throat> I do apologize. I've got a really dry throat. And I'll tell you what. You may not know this, but I actually quit smoking about three weeks ago. And it's been dead easy. <coughs> my cough has disappeared. I feel brilliant. I'm sleeping right. But occasionally I get a bit of a throaty cough just because I'm clearing everything. I'm clearing out my system. Oh, what? I've got a throaty cough today because it's my throat's really dry because it's quite it's hot today but it's not humid it's dry and hot so that's a kick-ass prize uh, so if you want to win that again stick a comment on when this show is finished and we'll see who wins next week so good luck to everybody <sighs> right so <clears throat> uh, yes I quit about three weeks ago because the doctor said to mum you need to stop smoking now then when the doctor tells you you kind of have to do it so we both and I thought well I can't carry on smoking so we both quit now I've just realised I've been painting this guy, haven't I? I didn't do anything on his other bits. I didn't do his weapons or his gun on the top. Not to worry, not to worry. Because uh, I should have done a wash on those as well. I've not dry brushed those yet, but I could do that later. That's no biggie. Is that the right ones? Yes, I think those are the right ones. So, where are we up to? So well done uh, to uh, whoever it was that won last week's prize. Do drop me a mail. Um, if I, if I don't hear from who, by the way, the other thing is, of course, if somebody wins a prize but I don't hear from them for a few weeks, I will contact them on YouTube, if I can, so I'll get hold of them somehow. Uh, anyway, I can to let them know they've won, usually by replying to their comment. Uh, but if it goes, like, for four or five weeks and I don't hear from anybody, I'll probably just put the prizes back in the pool and we'll draw them again. Um, five months since I gave it up, says Festus, 67 Workshop. Uh, Merlin's Muse, 29 years here, so I hear you. Congrats, Fox, says Lynn. Awesome, Fox, and uh, you will win, says Merlin. Uh, for some reason, it was just a case of... I've tried before, and it's been really hard. But because it was like, I have to give up now because Mum needs to give up, I'm like, done. Not even a second thought, not a craving, not a problem. I'm eating everything that doesn't move. I've put on, like, about a £1,000 of weight. I'm a big, fat bloater now. I'm not really. I've been a little bit spiky. A little bit, a little bit spiky, but not too much. But, yeah, it's fine. So, yeah, no more fags. Uh, anyway, right, where are we up to? <clears throat> are you vaping, says Sprigley? Nope, nope, I've, just, I've tried vaping for a bit. It was a complete waste of time. It did nothing for me. Um, plus, it doesn't get around the point of... It's just as harmful as cigarettes. So I decided, now. Just stopped. So where are we up to, anyway? <clears throat> oh, I was going to show my airbrush, wasn't I? Right, now, who was it that asked me about the airbrush? I forget who it was. Somebody said, can you show me how to take my airbrush apart? I shall do it now. So, here we have the Ivata Neo. A bit of a handbrake turn there, wasn't it? Now we're going to do this, and now we're doing this, and this is brilliant. Ivata Neo. I will need one simple tool, which I need to actually move a load of stuff to get to. Hang on. Yeah. I need one tool from my box. My nozzle spanner. Nozzle spanner. And this couldn't be easier. Uh, now, I'm not going to show you how to take the trigger assembly apart because I've never had to do that. <coughs> oh, Weebadoodle says, okay, I can catch a stream. Hey, Weebadoodles. Uh, if you, if you just in case you've just come in and you missed it, this is this week's prize for the giveaway. Oh, it's a big gold off. So you want to make sure you take part this week. I need you to make sure you put in comments on the video this week. There's always somebody who goes, oh crap, I forgot, and then they miss out on a really sweet prize. So, right, who was it Who was it asking me to um, show them how to take this apart? I've forgotten. I have a rubbish memory. So, just remember, tell me in chat who it was. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to show you how to take this off, because I've never done that. I don't feel the need to at the moment. It might break, and I might need to at some point, but I never have so far. But for a proper strip down and clean, it's dead easy. Uh, Sprue asked, apparently. Oh, it's Sprue Gladdit, yeah, so... Take the lid off, take off your paint cup, take off the back, it just unscrews, it just uns it, I've got slightly sweaty hands, take off the back cover here, like this you see, 
Uh, then you want to leave. This is your needle chuck. You want to leave that on for the moment. Take off your oh, crown cap. I've got ever so slightly sweaty hands. Now, the reason you leave the needle chuck on is because right here you'll see the needle is sticking out. There's two reasons you don't want to actually ding the needle. One is it's seven quid to replace it. But the other reason is if you stab yourself with that, it goes through to the bone and it really hurts. That will go through to the bone. So you want to take the, the bit off here, the actual cap, pull the trigger all the way back. This is why you leave this still locked in place. So it pulls the needle back. Take that bit off. Take that bit off. There you go. Got sweaty hands. So now you've got the needle exposed again, but you can see the nozzle there. So what you need to do, uh, see you all later, it's time to get the dinner on, says the War General. Thank you very much for coming in, dude. Much appreciate it. Uh, I need just to quickly change something, because I've just remembered. Uh, one second. All the wrong places. Uh, right, so, <clears throat> yeah, next we need to do is get the needle out and the nozzle out. This is where your needle, your nozzle spanner comes in. So, pull it back again. You'll see the needle disappears. I know you can't really see this very well. Needle goes into the nozzle. Get your nozzle spanner. Very gently. Get it on. Get it on. And just turn it anti-clockwise. You can do it. Just turn it once. Because then it should be loose enough to undo with your hand. And what I would recommend is put that in something. Like I've got these little glass things that tea lights come in. Put it in something like that so it's not rolling around in your desk because there a new needle will run you like seven quid A new nozzle is like 15 quid So make sure that's in something So you now got the needle completely exposed And all you need to do now is undo the needle chuck at the back And to take the needle out you do not pull it back don't ever pull it that way You always push it out the front and grab it like that and pull it out the front. The reason you don't pull it back through the back of the brush is because all you do is you drag it through all the crap and paint that might be behind the, the, the needle chamber. And if, if there is any paint or gunk behind here, you're either pulling the needle through it or you're taking all the crap that's on the needle and putting it in the back of the airbrush where you don't want it to go. So that's it, that's as far as I strip this down. All I do then is I get my, uh, I've got a load of the Tamiya airbrush cleaning brushes and I've got some, some dirt cheap, Get them from Boots or a chemist. Dirt cheap dental interstitial brushes. You get them from like Boots or a chemist for like two or three quid. You get a pack of these things. They're just dental brushes. They're brilliant. Or you've got your, your Tamiya airbrush cleaning brushes of different sizes. I tend to get uh, one in there, giving it a good scrum around. I get one in here. Now you can take off this. It's called the head unit. There's this bit here as well, which is called the head unit. You can take this off, it's not, I'm not going to do it now, and the only reason I'm not going to do it now is because it, it's, you put it on, it, you have to put it on very, very, very tight. Uh, and the only way I can get this off is with a pair of, a pair of pliers. Now it says, people will often tell you, don't do a pair of, in fact, I'll just do it, let's just do it. People will scream at you for doing this, but it, it's just, it, the only thing it damages is the finish on the outside. So don't give, don't give it a second thought, if it works. It might not work. This is not the way you're supposed to do it, you're supposed to do it by hand but trust me you'll never be able to do it by hand hang on hang on hang on these pliers might be a bit knackered there we go no we don't i think these pliers are actually a bit knackered because they're not gripping well i won't take that off because i can't get the pliers to grip uh, very well but yeah you ideally you know what you can do you're supposed to be able to just do it finger tight but if you do it finger tight what you find is you'll have air coming back up through the the paint cup uh, and the first thing to check for if you get air coming up through the paint cup is that this head unit is out on firmly and tightly because if it's not fully sealed that's where the air comes back so you can take that off so i'll get a big fat brush in here i might if i've used say um pledge floor care finish or a gloss varnish like that or I've been using like really stodgy metallic paint I might take this off and clean inside there with the brush and then clean inside the barrel with the brush uh, and give that a good scrub uh, don't ever dunk this in cleaner don't submerge it just clean it out you can clean 
Uh, now, depending on how old it is, this, this is one of the older ones. I don't think it's solvent safe, so I assume that it's not solvent safe. So what I tend to do is, this I use airbrush cleaner or X28 thinner or UMP thinners. This I clean with isopropyl alcohol because it's just a metal component. The paint cup, the lid, the, the crown cap and the crown I clean with isopropyl alcohol because they're just metal components. The nozzle I clean with airbrush cleaner or thinner. My normal acrylic thinners and that's all I actually need to clean. And cotton bud, use cotton buds. Now the return, the, the rebuilding uh, is... You can get pliers with nylon jaws, no scratches. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit scratched up there because I've used it before, but I don't really care what the outside looks like, to be honest. I, I, I couldn't care less what the outside of my airbrush looks like. It's, I care what it what it does. So I'm not a fussed, I'm not, I'm not like that. I don't really care if it's a bit scruffy or anything. Uh, right, so to put this back together, there's a certain order to do it. First thing you do is get your nozzle on. Get your nozzle on now. Here's where you want to be careful. Get your nozzle in by finger. I'm doing this from a distance. The fact I can do this without actually seeing it properly is quite a thing. Uh, and just give it a few turns. Get your, get your nozzle spanner. Nozzle spanner. And what you want to do is... It takes a, I'm not tightening. I'm trying to just get the nozzle spanner on the nozzle. You'll never get it on straight away. You have to kind of figure out where the flat bit is. Come on, where are you? So there we are. And what you do is when you tighten it, turn the airbrush... And as soon as you feel any resistance at all, stop. It does not need to be anything more than finger tight. Just as soon as it, as soon as it stops, like if you're turning the airbrush there, as soon as you feel any resistance to that turning at all, stop. If you go any more than that, all it will do is shatter the thread, the bit of the nozzle inside where the thread is, because it's only made of brass and it's very delicate. If you tighten it too much, it will just crack and snap, and that'll be 15 quid, thank you very much, for a new one. So get the spanner on there, just turn the airbrush, and as soon as you feel any resistance, stop. It's tight enough. It doesn't need to be super tight. This bit, the head unit, needs to be on there like like stink on a torn torn. It needs to be tight. That just needs to be loosely done. So get your nozzle on. Get your crown on. Again, just finger tight for that one. Get your crown cap. Your needle. And what I find easiest here is... Ooh, have I dinged my needle at some point? Oh no, I've got some schmuds on the end. Ew, I had some spooge on there. I find it easier to get, get it on my finger like that and just line it up with the bit where it goes in the back. Use my finger as a guide. and Very gently get it in there. Just push it forward. You want to be careful because it really doesn't take much at all to bend the end of your needle. And when you bend the end of your needle, it's a new needle time. Even just going ding on, a, on, a, on the surface can do bend it totally. <clears throat> so push it until it, it resists. As soon as you get resistance, stop. It will just stop moving. Get your uh, needle chuck. Finger tight. When it's in there, just you won't see this on camera, but just pull it back a couple of times and you'll see the needle coming in and out of the little nozzle at the front, little hole. Just make sure it's working. If you want to see if you've bent the end of the needle, what you can do is take off the crown and crown cap. And if you take this off, if you ever want to see if you've dinged the end and you can't quite tell, you can just rotate the needle. You won't really see it, but you can rotate the needle with the nozzle and just see if it if it was bent, you'd see the needle going like that, sticking out the nozzle. So it's a good, it's a good and handy way. I'm just going to pull that back and put the nozzle on. Handy way to see if you've dinged the end of your needle. So I'm just going to pull the needle back while I put those on. Push. Put that back on there. Uh, then the one thing you'll never do, it'll never go on the first time. I don't know why. It never works. You can never get it lined up. You have to kind of go, hang on. Uh, they have to kind of look at it and then and it, never in my entire life have I ever got it to go on straight away first time it just you're just trying to get the, the the end of the needle into the hole at the end of the at the end of this bit and it just it never does it first time that goes on finger tight get your uh, your cup on which also never goes in first time because I don't know why and there you have it you have now stripped it down to give it a good clean out 
and reassembled it. So the only key things are, if you do take the, the head unit off, make sure it's super tight. If you're getting air through the into the air cup, the first thing you want to check is if that on tight enough, tighten it up. And if it means tighten it with a pair of pliers like I've got, go for it. It makes it a nightmare to get off, but you don't have to remove it that often. So that is how to strip it down. So hopefully that helps. Uh, as for taking the trigger off, I've no idea. I've never had to do it. I've never tried it. So, and I, I don't really particularly want to because I'm an idiot and I will just break it forever. So, yeah, maybe not the best idea. So I'll just put that back in there. Do, do, do. You need practice, Foxy, says Scale Model Vamp. I don't need practice. I just need to not be doing it on camera because it's and be talking at the same time. And you have to remember when I'm doing it on camera, I'm doing it from like that distance. I'm, I'm my, my head's like two feet away. When I'm doing it in real life, I'm like this, like close to it. So I'm doing it from like two feet away. That's not bad for me with my eyes. Yeah, but yeah. If I wasn't, if I wasn't talking at the same time. Right, let's see what chat's doing. We've only really got half an hour to go, so probably not much point in me cracking on with more than this. We can carry on next week, because that's still drying in places. Uh, uh, Lynn Dipple says, Fox, don't use metal pliers. Take that that off. It will leave two marks and scratches. It does, but I don't care. Uh, I take a utilitarian view to my airbrushes. As long as they do the job, I don't mind what they look like, because they're usually covered in crap anyway. So It does make it less pretty, but I don't really mind. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Spriggly Addict bought his second hand. It doesn't have a spanner. Uh, if you go to, I don't know where you're based. If you're based in the UK, there's there's um, quite a few airbrush places online. You can buy spare part. Just do a Google search for spare parts for Iwata airbrushes, uh, and you'll find them. There's quite a few. Um, do, 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 do. I put electrical tape on mine. Okay, never mind then, says Lynn. So I guess that's after I said I don't care <laughs> when it's still scruffy. I, I, I'm a scruffy person, so it doesn't bother me that it's scruffy. I'll take care of things like my god hands because they're worth a lot of money. My airbrush I can replace easily, so I'm not really too fussed. I mean, it's still expensive, but I can replace it. I can't replace god hands, so they'll get looked after like... These will get looked after like they are actually god hand, god's hands. God's own hands! Uh, do 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 uh, let's have a look. Now that came out dirty, Foxy. He <laughs> he. Thank you so much, Fox. Now if I mess up, I can blame you. You're just denying everything now. Uh, oh, that's what they call it in South Africa. Hey, oh, that's a point. Uh, scale model vamp. Did you actually reply to me and say what the uh, South African version of G'day or Kiora is? I didn't see the comment. What do people in SA say when you say G'day, mate? What's what's your equivalent? Uh, Becky Vacation says hi, Fox. I miss your Gumpler videos. Uh, yes, I've had an extended period away from the workbench because uh, it's been too hot in the summer uh, my mum has been very ill and spending time in hospital so I've been away from the bench anyway I can, I can get time to do these because it's just a Sunday afternoon but the other stuff I've not had time uh, I am desperately trying to start my build of the Strike Rouge Oratory Master Grade for a Patreon uh, supporter once that is done that's the next thing that's due to start hopefully soon I keep trying to get it started but events keep conspiring against me once that's done, uh, the next Gumpler build will be the the uh, Cesabi Vercar, uh, which again will be for a patron, Patreon, for a patron even, uh, and that will be, uh, the Strike Rouge is going to be done in a purple colour scheme, and can be fairly clean. The Cesabi Vercar will be done in a special colour scheme to represent the uh, Shanghai Dragons, and uh, an eSports Overwatch team for the person I'm building it for, for George. In the middle of those two, there'll be a little build, little fun build of, of that will come between the two. It's not a gumpler, but it's adorable. I'll be doing that free models. It'll take me maybe a week. Bigger, <laughs> so bigger. Between the two. Oh, uh, Osric 9000. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work, he says. Thank you very much, Osric. I really appreciate it. So, yeah, so we've got the Strike Rouge. At some point, I will start. I need to get it done. Um, for those that don't know, I do have a Patreon page. It's patreon.com forward slash modelmakingguru. Uh, for patrons who support me at the top tier, $100 or more a month, I, I, after 12 months, I build them a Master Grade or a Warhammer kit uh, free of charge and send it to them. It's basically a commission, technically, uh, after 12 months of, of support. Uh, I'm supposed to have started it in kind of March for, for Jordan, and I've only just had chance in the last sort of month and month and a half, two months, and I haven't had chance to start it yet. So I'm like, oh, I need to get it done because I need to get it Need to get his straight rouge going, and I've got to do the uh, the Cesabi for George. So yeah, hopefully soon as it'll be the straight rouge master grade. 
that little U-boat, then it'll be the Sazabi. Uh, and then when the Sazabi's done, I've got another E-model to build to do. It's a big-ass tank. But then I'm really keen to get my my um, Kushatria done. I need to get that done. So there's lots more Gunpla to come. It's just I haven't had... Apart from these, I can get time at the bench here to do this, but I haven't had time to do any proper filming because I say family health, family stuff, and mum in hospital and everything else. It's just not been possible. So it's coming back. Don't worry. Uh, uh, let's have a look. New quote like stink on a torn torn. Yeah, this I can't remember where I got. I think I got it from. Uh, it's the old phrase: is it goes together like torn torn and stink, which I think came from uh, one of the people who was on Major Nelson Radio podcast many years ago, whose name I can't remember. She was one of the regular contributors. Uh, on the Major Nelson Radio, Major Major Nelson Radio podcast. It was an Xbox thing um, in the days when it was like Major Nelson and um, uh, Steptoe and E. I've not listened to it for a while because Steptoe left Microsoft, and I don't know if it was still. I think E might have moved on. Um, but yeah, anyway, it was Laura. I think her name was. She came up with like Taunt on the Stink. So I've, I've always I've always wanted to use it and never got around to it. Uh, does anyone use a cup cap when airbrushing, says Tony Blackwell. <clears throat> I do all the time because if I don't, I go like this and it goes everywhere. And there's nothing worse than your hand being sticky because it's covered in pledge. Uh, I do because I, if you watch me spray, I have two methods. I have a slow, say I'm doing a gloss coat or something, I have a slow slow method, which is that. If I'm getting a thin, a thin coat down. Uh, or if I'm building up a colour, and like when I was doing the dry brush here and I was doing circular motions, you'll see me do that a lot as well. Uh, and in the same way, I'm doing little circular motions like that, in the same way as doing the circular motions when dry brushing or doing circular motions with pencil cranes, doing circular motions with the airbrush also helps you keep a, 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 a uniform colour rather than having stripes where you've painted over. So sometimes I'll go fast like that. If it's if I'm doing like a, if I'm doing a UMP primer coat, I don't have to think. I can just go, I can sit there and go, Brrr. I can be doing that with the brush, just getting the primer on there because I don't care. UMP primer itself levels, even if you apply it like a like complete idiot. So I can just be doing that. I don't care. It doesn't have to be neat. If I'm painting on, say, an ammo paint, I'll be doing it very slowly in mist coats or gloss varnish. I'll be doing that. But then I'll be blowing air sometimes and doing that to get the air going. So when I'm doing that, this, this, it goes everywhere. So when I'm, because I do that a lot, I tend to have to have the lid on. Because I'm a mucky pup, I'm a messy pup. Which is why I also don't care that I used horrible metal pliers on my airbrush and scruffed it up because I'm a scruffy bugger anyway. Uh, let's have a look. I do, Tony, find the paint flows better, says Sprigu. Yeah, it does actually also stop your paint drying out quite as fast. If, you have a, if you're using a paint that tends to dry out very quickly, like acrylics or lacquers or something like that, it does also help stop a skin developing on the top of your paint a bit. Um, if I've painted with lacquers before and if you have just the paint cup open and you take if it's a long paint job and it's a hot day you can find that sometimes the skin can develop on the paint and when that gets sucked down it blocks up the airbrush and it's a pain to get out so I just find it, it helps it helps that reduce it a bit people are talking about lids folks multitask lol says Lynn it's all lies got a spare you can have it's moved uh, I'm really looking forward to that chibi U-boat, says Speedy Q8, yep. Backification says, sorry to about your mum's health, really looking forward to that Shanghai Dragons build. I'm a fan of Overwatch, so yeah, the chap I'm making it for, George, he, he's a fan of Shanghai Dragons. Um, but he specifically asked me to make it better than beaten, because apparently they're not very good. and They don't win games, so he wants it to look a bit screwed up. So it's going to be made to look like uh, one of the uh, armoured, whatever they call them, I don't know what they call them. I've, I, the only thing I can think of is well, mechs. Let's just say mechs. One of the mechs from that. Uh, I've got to see if I can get some decals made. Hello, Mummy, if you're watching. Mummy Fox says Sprugly Addict. I don't think she's watching because her battery ran out on her iPad and I would have charged by now. Off now, guys. Off to purge on COD WW2 for a bit, says James Chapman. Thank you for coming in. Do remember to take part in the giveaway for that awesome Godos kit. Uh, somebody mentioned fish and chips. Oh... Oh, fish and fish, says Weeba Doodles Fish. Uh, not had one for a while, and I've got a fresh bottle of Henderson's Relish. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Spitty Q8 says, I really want fish and chips now. Except I've screwed my ankle up, so I don't think I'll be driving to the fish and chip shop. Oh, damn you. 
for those that don't know, just before I started the live stream, I went outside to put something in the bin and fell on my ass <clears throat> and raked my ankle in one direction and grazed my knee on the other legs. And I've got a, bu a bust knee, a bust ankle. My other foot is hurting anyway because I'm old. Uh, Festa says you'll make me some decals. Uh, yeah, I think you mentioned that, uh, uh, Colin. Thank you. Yes, I'll need to uh, get some some uh, PNGs sorted out. Uh, I don't think there's any white in them as well in the logo, which is kind of handy. Do, 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 do. If you are local to Cumbria and you know where Ulverston is, uh, go to the Chippy Bank chip shop. If you want really good fish and chips, the best fish and chips I've ever had, it's in Ulverston in the Lake District, right kind of next door to the Laurel and Hardy Museum, if it's still in the same place. The Chippy Bank, it's on the corner, it's surrounded by like 40 pubs, which is always a winner. Uh, they do the best scampi I've ever had in my entire life, and their fish and chips is to die for. Ask Ted. Ted knows all about it. Uh, George Flouter. Shanghai has heart, though. Yes, they're probably terrible, but they have heart, and that's it's like cool runnings. It's that kind of thing. It's like the team that's never going to win. Uh, uh, do, do, do. Let's have a look. Wish this town had a good fish and chips place, says Lynn Dipple. You're American. You don't do good fish and chips. <clears throat> you need to come over to Britain sometime, and we'll give you proper fish and chips. Uh, My chip isn't great, but we don't have much choice. My local chippies, there's a couple of them. They're all right. The, the, the local, local, local one that was in walking distance actually closed down, which is a shame. It's been there since I was a kid. The same people in it like grew up with me, and they're gone now, so I have to drive to a place, which is all right, but they do kebabs and stuff as well, And but they do nice chips. The fish is nice. <sighs> right, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Um, I don't think we're going to get any more done now because it's quarter to six. Uh, that's still got a couple of spots of moistness. So we've got a coat of Agrax Earth shade on there. So we've started off with a lead belcher, a uh, couple of shades of Null Oil. Then we've done a, uh, what did we do? I've forgotten the colour we use now. What was the colour? Uh, Balthazar Gold on the gold parts. We've not finished those yet. Balthazar Gold for the gold areas, and the bronze areas. Uh, then another shade with Agrax Earth shade. Just one, just one coat. Uh, after, oh sorry. Dry brushed with um, Iron Breaker and then a shade of the Balthazar. Ugh, get my words in the right order. <sighs> dry brushed, Iron Breaker, Gold Parts, Balthazar Gold, Shade Layer, an extra shade layer, and Grax Earth Shade. So, what we need to do next is crack on again with these bronze parts and do another dry brush on the metallic parts just to bring it back a little bit in certain areas. Uh, and then crack on with the armour. So we're going to leave it there. I'll, I'll do the arms to match and I'll get the other one done up as well to, to match <clears throat> over the next, well, next Saturday because weekend is my Warhammer time. Uh, but we'll leave it there. So thank you to everyone who's been watching. Uh, I don't know, again, in terms of the Strike Rouge build and other stuff, I will be on the, well, unless we get a letter from the hospital tomorrow saying my master go in tomorrow, I will, I will be on the E-Models live stream tomorrow night with Chris. Uh, Skipper Ted, Ted, uh, is still we'll, 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 we're forcing him not to be on the live stream because he's not he's not back in a in a good enough state yet to be up and running around doing all the stress of the live stream. So we've told him just to shut up and sit down and watch like everybody else. He might be in the chat, but he's he's doing all right. Uh, so hopefully I should be on the live stream tonight. Uh, if I if I am called away, if Mum goes in tomorrow, there probably won't be any models live stream because I, I wouldn't ask Chris to do it on his own. He might do, but I doubt he would. Um, but we'll we'll let E models know. I, I doubt. I doubt there'll be any problems. We should be fine. So I shall see you all tomorrow anyway. Um, hopefully in the next week at some point I can do some work on that strike rouge. Hopefully, again, it depends on hospital for mum and the weather because it's been too hot. I am actually sweating cobs at the bench here. I've got the fan on, but it's not too bad. So it's starting. the weather's starting to turn now. So hopefully this week, Jordan, I really am trying to get it done. But there's so much that's going on at the minute. <sighs> and George, obviously I need to get that done so I can do yours, your Cesabi, which I really want to do. Uh, so hopefully soon anyway, but I'll try and get some stuff done this week. Again, apologies for my regular followers who haven't. All I've done is the occasional unboxing of a mystery package. You all know why I've been away from the bench. Um, so yes, I've been a bit quiet. I'm still trying to hang out in the Boom Hut and stuff. Don't forget, as always, if you want to go and uh, join in the Boom Hut fun, do go along. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom hut. It's the best group on the internet for model making. Best group on Facebook, at uh, very least. Uh, no bitching, no snark, no nastiness. It's all very supportive. Everybody's good mates. Everybody has a laugh. And it's some brilliant, brilliant, talented people on there. So go and hang out and check it out. Uh, and don't forget, of course, if you'd like to help me out, uh, there is a tip jar. 
streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru uh, where you can if you want to just well there's two things you can do if you want to support this channel because this is my living uh, you can support me on patreon uh, patreon.com forward slash model making guru uh, where you can support me each month with as, anything from a dollar upwards it's entirely up to you how much you little or as much or as little as you'd like to to offer uh, that's a monthly thing that keeps me going and there are various advantages to being a patron you get various exclusive content uh, or if you're not really up for doing it every month you can just do a one-off tip jar to the payment it's streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru both of those help me keep this channel going this is my this is my day job this is my income so <clears throat> i'm supremely grateful to everyone that helps out if you do it during the live stream it helps it helps get my health down and don't forget of course we're up to about 200 quid now so whoever does win this this thing up here it's going to be kind of kick ass it's going to be kick ass and i will obviously let everybody know uh, everybody will know who wins uh, and i will obviously announce the week after what they've chosen and you'll be like wow and then you'll all be enthused because you can all win everybody can win something um, so yeah, so if you'd like to help support the channel, Patreon and the tip jar, do feel free. I'd be more than grateful. It does keep me going. But that's going to do us. So until next time, thank you so much for your patience and for watching. Thank you to everyone for their kind thoughts about mum uh, and everything else that's been going on. Uh, nobody's offered any kind thoughts from me falling on my ass, but that's fine. I don't expect any. Don't. I'll, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I'll, I may never walk the same again. You know, I'll be fine. Don't worry. Uh, I'd love to join the boom hut, but Facebook is evil, says Sprueglue. Just set up a profile, don't put any information in it, just put a picture up, just put your name and stuff, don't put anything too personal in there, and just join just join the Boom Hut. You're not giving Facebook any information. And even if you haven't joined Facebook, they've probably got all your information anyway from everywhere else, so at this point it's moot. They've probably got all your data anyway, I wouldn't actually worry about it too much. Um, but anyway, I'm waffling like an ass now, so we should stop. I need to go away and clean some brushes. I'll get this painted up to match that one, and we'll carry on next week. Hopefully. Uh, so until next time, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. I'll see most of you probably tomorrow night on the eModels live stream. And until then, oh, hang on, I'm getting to the end bit and I've not even set all the buttons up yet. Oh, do you know? I've not even set anything up. Right, so until next time, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Adios, amoebas. I've got to press buttons now. Hang on.